goodness. 100 miles south of where you guys are here at Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville. We welcome you to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. We kick off what is perhaps the biggest college football Saturday in the history of the state. This game, AM and Mississippi State, the first in Starkville between two top 15 teams in almost 30 years. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Right now is the quietest it will be all day. The calm before the cowbells. Mississippi State won the toss and deferred, so the Bulldogs will start on defense, and we'll get a look at one of two players in this game who are early, I stress the word early, Heisman candidates, AM quarterback Kenny Hill. You got Dak Prescott on the other side for Mississippi State. Freshman Logan Cook will boot it deep. Trey Williams and true freshman Speedy Noyle are back to the Aggies. It'll be Noyle from the three-yard line. And Noyle with room across the 30. And pushed out at the 32. Everybody alongside Brian Greasy, I'm Dave Pass, and this is kind of a prove-it day for both these teams. AM coming off a come-from-behind overtime win against Arkansas. Two weeks ago, Mississippi State won at LSU, but win the SEC, you got to do it every week. Yeah, and these are two teams that are really trying to break into the elite of the SEC West. If they're going to do that, today's a big day in proving that. Two great quarterbacks in their first year as the full-time starter. It's going to be a great matchup. First down for Texas A&M, just outside its 30-yard line. They'll go out of an empty set with a redshirt freshman quarterback. Hill finds Trey Carson up to the 38. Let's get Tom Luganville in here. Some injuries to tell you about. Yeah, pretty significant injuries, guys. Let's start off with Malcolm Kennedy at Texas A&M. Suffered a shoulder injury on his left side against Arkansas. He will not go today. Was listed as questionable coming in. And then Jamie on Lewis for Mississippi State. That one's going to be very interesting. The best space player on the Mississippi State offense out today with a lower right leg injury. Jamoro Graham, the true freshman, the punt returner, likely to fill in that role as we're seeing tremendous pace already from Texas A&M. And Kennedy is the number two receiver in the SEC behind Amari Cooper. We have a stoppage of play here. And official timeout. They're working on the chains over there on the sideline. That's, those are two big losses for these teams. You think about Malcolm Kennedy, a captain, their leading receiver on this offense for Texas A&M, and a security blanket for Kenny Hill. And Jamie Lewis is the playmaker on, on the offense for Mississippi State. Hill from the 42-yard line has time in the pocket. Deep throw, and it's pulled in at the 30-yard line. Six-foot-four-inch Edward Pope. Up high to grab it for 28 yards. This is going to be a huge key in this game. The deep passing game for Texas A&M against this Mississippi State secondary. That's Tevez Calhoun. They gave up 435 yards to UAB. It's going to be an attack from A&M on the deep post and the deep plates of their big wide receivers. Danny Hill, of course, set the school record in his first start at South Carolina. Threw for over 500 yards. Johnny Manziel's replacement. At the quarterback spot, that pass a little behind. Ricky Seals Jones, another tall receiver, 6'5. Kenny Hill, a sophomore from South Lake, Texas, and 17 touchdowns, number two in the country in that category. And you really couldn't have had a better start with the way he started his season last week against Arkansas. A little bit of a wake up call for Kenny Hill the first three quarters, but found a way to win in the fourth quarter and proves to his team that he can be dependable when the game is on the line. Leads the SEC in passing yards, passing touchdowns, and total offense. Hill off the pump fake. And a low pass is pulled in by Seals Jones, a redshirt freshman who missed almost all of last year with a knee injury. Great catch and adjustment from Ricky Seals Jones. 
Last year injured, didn't get a whole lot of playing experience, but this year he's starting to come on. And it will rotate back. Trey Carson, Brandon Williams, and now Trey Williams, but it's a quick pass, and it's a touchdown for Josh Reynolds. In less than two minutes, AM goes down the field and scores. Such a fast pace and tempo, and Kenny Hill, when he's distributing the football and, and throwing that ball quick, it's very difficult to get to him. That time Mississippi State decided to bring a corner blitz to try to get some pressure. Kenny Hill did a great job recognize it and giving the ball to Reynolds for the touchdown. They normally score first under third year head coach Kevin Sumlin who is 25 and 6 now at A&M coming into today. And the point after by Lambeau makes it 7 nothing as Hill throws his 18th touchdown pass of the year and Josh Reynolds with six receiving touchdowns already at the game winner. And the game tying touchdown last week and scores first here today. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Well, most teams don't have 20 touchdowns this season. They have 20 touchdowns under two minutes this season. That was 141. And in case you missed the touchdown pass to Reynolds, video of it is now posted on the Sports Center app, available on your mobile devices and tablets whenever you need it. I don't think that's the last touchdown we'll be calling today. <laughs> Both these teams with prolific offenses. Taylor Bertolette will now kick it to Mississippi State. We'll see what Dak Prescott can do. Short kickoff. And it will go into the end zone for a touchback. It will come out to the 25. You know, Dave, one of the most impressive things about Kenny Hill is that for a young player, he sees the field so well. This time, Mississippi State decides to bring the corner pressure. That's Jamerson Love off the edge. But look at the eyes of the quarterback. He aborts the fake. He's supposed to be faking that ball, but he knows he has trouble. He sees it, gets rid of that ball, and gets a one-on-one -on, -one on Justin Cox for the touchdown. That's just great awareness from a, from a first-year player at the quarterback position and a big reason why Jake Spavital, their offensive coordinator, and Kevin Sumlin are excited about number seven. We'll talk more about his demeanor and how it differs from Johnny Manziel a little bit later. Let's talk now about Dak Prescott, who will run it and pitch on first down to Josh Robinson, the outstanding running back. Game of about six. Rain Dakota Prescott, Dak for short. And you see his numbers, only his 12th career start. He is number two in the SEC behind Kenny Hill in total offense. And yeah, I would argue he had the most impressive game of any player in college football against LSU on the road with what he did. Has to try to step away from trouble. And there's true freshman Miles Garrett, who now has six and a half sacks on the year. Yeah, and he's going to line up out right out here on Blaine Clausell. He's just got so much speed and the power to go with it, Clausell on the third second snap of the game he's got to get used to the speed of, of Miles Garrett you don't see that every single week the kind of speed and athleticism that Garrett's going to bring to the table eight yard loss third down and 13 Prescott and a flag down passes incomplete intended for Robert Johnson but roughly on the defense here Texas A&M wearing new uniforms today the players didn't know it until they got to the locker room Devontae Davis, uh, Devontae Harris, rather, on the coverage. Ken Williamson, our referee, will let us know if it's uh, an automatic first down for Mississippi State. Holding against the defenses. Other way, Ken. Claire, number one. <laughs> they let him know to turn around. <laughs> He's mad at you. See? <laughs> Holding. Defense. 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So Harris commits the hold, trying to cover the receiver, Robert Johnson. It's an automatic first down for Mississippi State. Uh, and we were talking about Devontae Harris and these, this secondary for AM is going to have their job a little bit easier in this game because no Jamie on Lewis at the wide receiver position. He uh, got hurt in practice this week, lower leg. Big loss for the for Mississippi State. Prescott, uh, Prescott dumping it to Josh Robinson, who drags a defender with him. 
Up past the 35-yard line. Robinson is strong. Only about 5'9", but he's 215, 220 pounds. He had almost 200 yards on the ground against LSU two weeks ago. And that loss of Lewis at the wideout position puts more onus on Robinson as well as Prescott in the running game. Here comes a pitch to Gabe Miles. He breaks a tackle and has the first down. Finally stacked up at the 46-yard line, a 10-yard game. You know, I'm talking with Dan Mullen before the game. He said that, that Gabe Miles is that guy that's going to need to, to pull the slack without Lewis in the game. This is typically what Jamie on Lewis was so good at in the running game on the perimeter. Gabe Miles is a guy they're very excited about. Just a redshirt freshman. Prescott rolling left and fires complete to big to run you Wilson at 6-5 it's his 11th catch on the year he had a big game against Texas A&M last year at two touchdown catches there's a penalty marker down illegal formation offense four and four players in the backfield five yard penalty repeat second down so that negates gain of a handful for Wilson. Dan Mullen last year won seven games. Remember two years ago they started 7-0. People were talking about Mississippi State like they are right now. Well, they, they finished 8-5. and five. But uh, Mullen told us yesterday he thinks he's in much better shape with this club this year, although knows the schedule is ridiculously tough. In, in terms of who they play in the West and East, they have Vanderbilt and Kentucky. Prescott pitching it on first down and 15, and Robinson at the 30-yard line. Inside the 15 before he's pushed out. Yard run by Robinson. Great block by the wide receivers. Jamaro Graham, number 81 and five. That's Fred Brown. Brown play. Foul. With targeting. Defense number eight. We have a penalty for targeting. Let's see who that player is. I didn't hear. Nick Harvey, a true freshman, is. I think who the, the yeah, referee mentioned, yeah. there, so it Harvey. is Harvey, so he is gone. And you tack on more yardage, that puts the ball inside the 10-yard line. Let's take a look. There's he, He's going to hit Prescott, and he just goes high. He bends, his head goes down, and he hits him right in the head. Again, that's Nick Harvey with forcible contact. That's the rule this year, and it's a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. And especially when you do it on a quarterback in a very high profile position like that with the referee looking right at you, he's not going to miss that. I think he got maybe got that number uh, wrong. After further ado, ruling on a field is confirmed. The right is disqualified. You know, is that number eight or is that number nine? That, that, I think that's number nine. I think that's Quaylen Cunningham. I think they threw the wrong guy out of the game. Cunningham's a defensive lineman. Now they're stopping play. I, it, it's hard to see the uh, the name above the number. And I think Kevin Sumlin is saying you threw the wrong guy out right. of the game. Well, Nick Harvey is a defensive back. He's number eight on the roster. Quaylen Cunningham yeah. is number nine. That's Cunningham, right? Looks like eight, but that's number nine. He's just has scrunched up there. You can see the front of his jersey is number nine. So he is uh, gone for the game. True freshman from Chandler, Arizona. And it's first down and goal for Mississippi State at the five-yard line. Prescott keeps it, and he gets to the one-yard line. Brought down by Justin Bass. Deshaun Hall in there as well, second down and goal. Prescott averages 95 yards per game on the ground. They go quick here. And m not lined up. Robinson to the goal line. It is touchdown, Mississippi State. That's 
five rushing touchdowns now for Josh Robinson. And both teams have scored, and we're not even at the 10-minute mark yet. All even at seven after the Evans OBS point after. Texas A&M is going to do it through the air. You saw them go right down. Mississippi State is going to do it on the ground with Dak Prescott and Josh Robinson. Both impressive drives to start this game out. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Josh Robinson with a touchdown run, a 75-yard drive, aided by a defensive penalty that gave Mississippi State an automatic first down. Otherwise, uh, the Bulldogs were off the field. Ray Williams and Noyle are deep for Texas A&M. There'll be no return here. Out to the 25. Kenny Hill sharp on that opening drive for Texas A&M, which under Kevin Sumlin, trying to go to 6-0 for the first time in 20 years. A lot of talk going into the year about whether it would be Kenny Hill or true freshman Kyle Allen at the quarterback position. Someone went with Hill, and that move has paid off. And he went with Hill because of his calm demeanor and his poise. And for a young player, we saw it on that first drive. And in another hostile environment here, we'll see how he plays. Hill with a quick toss. And a good play in the open field as Seals Jones is dropped by Will Redman for a one-yard loss. He got a tackle out of space against Texas A&M, and they did that time. Well, there's no question, and Mississippi State's going to have to play three corners. Their nickel package predominantly all game here against the four wide receiver sets. Motioning out of the backfield there was Trey Williams. Another pass to Seals Jones. Another drop by Will Redmond so that's two tackles for Redmond who's made plays this year at two interceptions for Mississippi State and, and Jeff Collins our defensive coordinator said we want to we want to make him throw the ball short we don't want to give up the big play down the field make him throw short come up and make the tackle and they've done it on back-to-back -back plays they've been great on third down all year number three in the SEC seventh in the nation Hill on third and long with time and wide open to the sideline, but unable to make the catch with Sabian Holmes off his fingertips and a three and out. Holmes was wide open on the corner route. This ball just travels a little bit long. I think Sabian Holmes started to think about getting his one foot down. See, he kind of takes his eye off the ball. He can make that play. Here's Drew Kayser. All-American punter a year ago, Jamoro Graham is deep for Mississippi State. And Graham muffed it, and AM jumps on it. It'll be Texas AM ball inside the Mississippi State 30. It was an awkward attempt by Graham as he tried to secure the football. Alex Freeman was right there to hop on. The muffed punt. But this might be the biggest change or loss for Mississippi State not having Jamie on Lewis in the game. He's their punt returner. Now you put a true freshman and Jamoral Graham back there, and right off the bat, first punt return, he got pressure from Brandon Williams, the starting tailback for Texas A&M, covering punts, put a little pressure on him, and Graham blinks. And how about the long snapper, Alex Freeman, running down there, making a play for his team, and now A&M on the cusp of the red zone. Be a run play to Brandon Williams. And Williams cuts it upfield and gets positive yardage. Big middle linebacker Bernardrick McKinney at 6'5", 250. Leading tackler for Mississippi State. Got him to the ground. And you know you have a, a, a selfless team when you have a, a player like Brandon Williams or starting tailback that's willing to go down on punts and affect the game positively in special teams. After the one yard gain, Hill to the air, through the hands of Seals Jones, incomplete. 
He's been targeted four times already in this game. It's third down. That ball comes out a little bit high. Kenny Hill only six foot one, so sometimes he's got to throw that ball from awkward positions to get it over the offensive line. That ball just sailed a little bit high on him. It was six seven. Seals Jones to six five. On third and long, Hill with a ton of time. And that one is right at the first down marker. The catch made by Boone Niederhofer, a walk on. And they're going to say that he's short by a yard. Let's see if AM goes for it. It looks like the Aggies are lining up for a fourth down play. Great reaction from Jamerson Love. Again, force him to throw short, come up and make the tackle. But AM's going to bring in a heavy package, which. They bring in three offensive linemen, three extra offensive linemen. Cameron Clear, their 6'6", 270-pound tight end, and Trey Carson, their big back. Fourth down and a yard and a half. You see the two linemen in the backfield with Carson. Play clock inside five. Here's Carson, hit in the backfield. No running room. Mississippi State takes over on down. Benique West Brown was there for Mississippi State. So they avert disaster after the muff punt. They come up with a stop on fourth down and get the ball back for their offense. This is Mississippi State's bread and butter internal run game. Benique West Brown runs right through the gap and gets a big fourth down stop. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Cadillac. This was a land grab yesterday afternoon near Davis Wade Stadium here on the campus of Mississippi State. What a great scene it's been here the last 24 hours in Starkville. Go back to the uh, fourth down stop. You're going to see Beniquez Brown come right through the middle. This is why you don't want to pull Wyman on short yardage. It creates a crease at the line of scrimmage that Beniquez Brown hits perfectly. But when you're in short yardage situations, you want your lineman just to come off strong and, and in the gaps and, and make sure it's secure. It was a very uh, interesting call there from Texas A&M. You see the tackles for a loss this season. 17 different players from Mississippi State with a tackle for a loss. Now Prescott stepping up, airing it out, overthrew Darunya Wilson, who had a step on Devontae Burns, the defender. First time we've seen Dak Prescott take a shot downfield. We know he wants to get the ball to Darunya Wilson. It's man-to-man, -man. great separation there from the line of scrimmage, and that ball, you just got to put him on, put it on him there, and Dak Prescott hits his chest. But there was a flag My bad. play. Defensive holding the call, so that's the second defensive holding on AM. First down, Mississippi State. Robinson off the left edge and brought down at the point of attack. No gain on the play. DeShazer Everett, a defensive back, in there with Ivan Robinson. I think you're going to see Texas AM focus on stopping the running game here for Mississippi State and force Dak Prescott to make plays with his arm. Robinson again trying to cut it back and a good carry there about eight Miles Garrett who had a sack earlier got Robinson to the ground so third down at about two or three here. Pace for Mississippi State not quite as fast as Texas A&M but they still like to get up there and go. Third down and two Prescott throws complete to Wilson. In the AM territory. Spun down by Everett. It's a first down, though, for Mississippi State. Good patience by Dak Prescott to let Jeronia Wilson work over there. He sees his man to man coverage. He goes to his number one receiver with the size on the outside. Great use of hands by Jeronia Wilson on the slant to get the shooter Everett off of him. Off play action. This is where Prescott is so good. Going for Wilson. Broken up by Devontae Harris. 
They do most of their damage through the air off play action, but Harris that time covered Wilson very well. Yeah, and I think you, you see Deronia Wilson, he's supposed to clear out for Jamal Graham on a corner route, and I think you're going to start to see some of this. When you, when you have a, a player that goes out in Jamie and Lewis and Jamal Graham, a true freshman, that you're going to have some routes that don't quite look like they're supposed to because he doesn't quite know the offense as well. But if you're Dak Prescott, you can't make an error in that situation. Takes the pitch, and Prescott brought down inside the 45-yard line by Ivan Robinson. A five-yard pickup there for the 230-pound junior. He wasn't really recruited coming out of high school, but at Mississippi State camp, he sold everybody because of his leadership and just being a beast in the weight room. And you could see the leadership when we sat down with him yesterday. Great kid. Has that it factor that the coaches talk about. Robinson. No running room this time. Back probably lost a yard. Deshaun Hall in there with a couple other bigs up front for AM. That was interesting there. Play call third and five. Yeah. You run the ball inside, and Texas AM was expecting it. They had six, seven defenders in the box and conservative. I think you may see Dan Mullen be a little more conservative without his top playmaker, Jamie Lewis, in the game. A uh, punt coming here. Logan Cook who had to move a little bit to his right. He's a true freshman. Another true cross. Speedy Noyle with a fair catch at the five yard line. A quick start with each team scoring a touchdown in the first five minutes of the ball game. Putting the score by Josh Reynolds. And a Mississippi State even at seven. Seven seven and in the Mississippi State as we continue the Dr. Pepper championship drive game of the week. Here's an interesting look. Mississippi State's bench not facing the field but facing the stands. You ever seen that? No, I've never seen that before. I think they that's John Hevesy, the offensive line coach and the co-coordinator. I think he just wants their full attention. They don't want to watch in the game. Texas A&M backed up inside its 10, and the Aggies will run the football. Trey Carson takes a defender along for a five-yard ride out to the 11. Richie Brown on the tackle. This is an impressive offensive line for Texas A&M. Cedric Abway, your left tackle. We even get Jarvis Harrison back, the left guard. He was out for a while. Matthews, Rafetti, the right tackle. One of the best in all of college football. Hill will throw. Sideline pass is caught by Seals Jones for a first down. Wrapped up at the 21. Tevez Calhoun on the tackle. Seals Jones is 6'5, 235, 40 pounds. We were talking with Kevin Sumlin. Said he's he's got to continue to work on his conditioning. At that big size, it's very difficult for him to run as much as they require these AM receivers. Carson will run here, met in the hole, and brought down after a gain of two. Christian Holmes with a big hit. But back to your point on Seals Jones. That's four catches now. They've targeted him five or six times already here in the opening quarter. Hey, he was quiet a week ago against Arkansas, but he's one of those guys that can get hot. Second and seven for Texas A&M. Kenny Hill, eight of 11, a touchdown pass so far. Another pass play with time. Now Hill takes off and able to break a tackle and get the first down. Run out of bounds at the 36-yard line. That's a 13-yard scamper by the quarterback. That's so tough to cover all these wide receivers downfield. And then when Kenny Hill decides, great protection. Tavares Calhoun comes in right there, number 23. That's the tackle. you got to get him on the ground before he gets to the first down stick. Quick throw to the flat. A man who caught the touchdown, Reynolds. And a good open field stop that time by the very talented Matt Wells, senior that the coaches love. His athletic ability and very good tackler in the open field. And he's an important player today for Mississippi State because he's the one guy on this defense in the front seven that has the athletic ability and the, and the speed to play out in space with these AM wide receivers. Second down and six. Hill, a long throw that's dropped. 
That's two drops by Sabian Holmes here in the first quarter. You know, guys, we've talked about just how big and physical this Mississippi State defensive front seven is. In fact, it's probably the biggest, most physical group in the country too deep. But the pace and the tempo as this game wears on, that's the equalizer for Texas A&M. It's going to slow pass rush. The faster they go, we're going to find out an awful lot about the conditioning of this Bulldog front seven. That's how A&M beats it. They did it to Alabama. Hill stepping up in the traffic, but it's dropped. Almost caught by Reynolds. He had it pop loose at the last second. And so it's fourth down. That was a great play from Tavez Calhoun. You're going to have to fight tooth and nail every inch of the way against these receivers. He gets his hand in there. Great job of continuing to fight for that football. Did, did he possess it and make a football move before it was popped out or no? I don't think he had possession there. I think Calhoun was hand fighting with him and never had possession of that football. Every stop is a big stop for Mississippi State. Already a muffed punt. This time it's pulled in by Graham and he's got running room. Brought down around the 34 yard line. Late first quarter here in Starkville. Texas A&M 7, Mississippi State 7. And a big one between top 15 teams. Tonight, Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo on ABC. Pitts Michigan State against Nebraska. Amir Abdullah, sensational. Running back for the Huskers. That's at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Here in Starkville, Dave Pash, Brian Gracie, Tom Luganbill. We are tied at 7. Maybe the defense is settling down a little bit here. Yeah, each team gets a body blow with an opening drive touchdown and defenses now. Mississippi State running the ball. Josh Robinson doesn't get much, maybe two. Sean Washington on the stop. If Mississippi State's going to get this offense rolling, it's going to be behind number 15. It's, it's his show. And the biggest difference in my eyes with, with Dak Prescott from a year ago is his confidence and leadership. You start to see it. You saw it in Death Valley in that big win against LSU. And this team is unquestionably his. Off play action. Prescott with time. And the catch is made inside the 45 by Fred Ross. Marking at the 41 yard line. Well, who's going to step up? Who is going to step up at the wide receiver position without Jamie and Lewis? They need Fred Ross. They need Fred Brown. They need Robert Johnson. We know about Deronia Wilson, but who of that group is going to come out and make plays for Mississippi State? Fifth catch of the year for Ross. Another play fake. And Prescott moving to his left. Sandwiched at the 40-yard line, one-yard gain. We saw him break a couple tackles, run around in the pocket, and throw a 74-yard touchdown pass to Jamie and Lewis against LSU. He's very creative. Smart player, always keeping his eyes downfield. Well, we know he can run the ball. We saw that a year ago. The, the big thing he worked on in the offseason was his throwing and his footwork in the pocket. He was telling me yesterday he worked all offseason with just his footwork to make sure his body was underneath him when he threw the ball. Here's Robinson trying to get the corner. And Robinson not afraid. As he runs into three defenders, but it doesn't matter. He just splattered him at the 33-yard line. That's a seven-yard gain, so third down and short. <laughs> 72 yards already on the ground for Robinson. High snap. Prescott going to keep it, and he plunges for the first down at the 31-yard line. Prescott with 200 passing yards or more and 100 rushing yards or more in three straight games. That's the longest active streak in the country. It's something that previous Heisman winners, Cam Newton, Tim Tebow, Johnny Football, never did. Now he's got a little bit of all those guys in him. Looks like Cam Newton when he gets in the second level. Looks like Tim Tebow with a power run game and then Manziel with his creative creativity. Prescott with time. Got a man. Up high to make the grab is Joe Morrow. His fifth catch of the year and his first down and goal. Morrow goes 6'4", 210 pounds, and great physicality off the line of scrimmage on Devontae Harris. They're going to see a lot of man coverage. 
Prescott, quick throw to the flat. Inside the five-yard line is Miles, and down at the two. Harrison Burns on the tackle at second and goal for Mississippi State. Final seconds of the opening quarter, and the Bulldogs want to run another play. I think they want to keep the small defense of the AM on the field. Robinson powers in for a second touchdown of the opening quarter. Nobody wants to tackle that guy. I think Sean Washington actually had a shot right at the goal line. He just got run over. He absolutely did. I think they got caught with the wrong personnel on the field. Nine carries, 74 yards, and two touchdowns for junior Josh Robinson. We were wondering with Lewis out, who would step up at receiver? How about Joe Morrow for the big catch, getting the ball inside the 10. And then Josh Robinson right through Sean Washington for his second score. Remember those Mississippi State teams that were great on defense and they just had to not mess it up on offense? Well, this is an offense that's completely different. They came in averaging 41 points a game, and they are balanced. 270 yards on the ground, their average 268 through the air. We saw it on that drive. Now, this is the SEC now. It used to be about defense. You had a national championship a few years ago that was six to three. <laughs> I think about Alabama now. They're known as an offensive team, as are most of the teams in the SEC West at the top of the standing. Noyle thought about it, but it'll be a touchback. 13 seconds left in the opening quarter. AM scored first, but Mississippi State now leading by seven. Josh Robinson on pace for about 1,700 yards this year. He is third in the SEC in rushing at 121 yards per game, but he's going to go past that mark, you would think, at this point. Already at 74 rushing yards. The first down for Texas A&M from the 25, and a draw play. The delayed handoff to Brandon Williams. He's out to the 33-yard line for eight yards there. And that's the end of the first quarter. Both teams undefeated. Both ranked in the top 15. Both in the SEC West. Mississippi State leads after one. ESPN is your home of the new college football playoff. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. SEC West teams are 25 and 0 against non-SEC West teams. That obviously will change today with three big ones in the division. Celebrating its 10th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal an extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has contributed $3.4 million in scholarship funds. 14-7, Mississippi State leads Texas A&M as we start the second quarter. The Aggies have a second down and two on their 33-yard line. Kenny Hill, 9 of 14, a touchdown pass, had a little trouble with the snap there, so he just takes off. And Hill, slam down, the ball comes out at the 43-yard line. P.J. Jones hacked it out. And Texas A&M got it back. It was the center, Mike Matthews, who recovered it. Very fortunate. It looked like he bobbled the snap and then tried to make a move here. That ball is definitely out. I think that's the backup safety, Deontay Evans, that came up and got a shoulder pad on the ball. So it is a first down and a quick toss to Niederhofer. Out to the 49-yard line. Good pick up there, about six yards. Niederhofer well, getting more action yep. today because of the injury to Malcolm Kennedy. Absolutely, and he get, takes a big hit from Will Redman. 
the backup corner there. They cannot lose Niederhofer because, as you said, he's the guy they're depending on to fill in for Malcolm Kennedy. Yeah, Redmond's had a good first half. A couple of nice open field tackles on Seals Jones and a big hit there on Niederhofer. And you might say, well, wait a minute, they got all kinds of talent at the wide receiver position. They've got some tall, lanky guys, but they don't have a whole lot of the short guys that have quick feet that can work the middle of the field on third down like Niederhofer and Kennedy. Kennedy's been a security blanket. Another high snap for Hill in trouble. And Hill is brought down for a sack. Big Bernardrick McKinney. 6'5", 250, an old school middle linebacker. Well, he doesn't just play Mike linebacker. He comes out in rush situations. He's on Obwehi there. Obwehi just takes a bad set. You don't see that very often from him, an outstanding player, but McKinney with a good rush to the quarterback. Third down and seven. Pump fake by Hill. Being chased, pumps again, and then throws low. Josh Reynolds, the intended receiver. After that first drive, Mississippi State's defense has played well, forcing another punt here. Sometimes you come out as a quarterback in an offense, and your first drive couldn't go any better. You put pitching and catching, ball go right down the field like hot knife through butter, and then all of a sudden, defenses make adjustments, and this Mississippi State defense, which is excellent, has made good adjustments. Jeff Collins, the defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, high punt by Kayser. And the fair catch made inside the 15 by Jamoral Graham. Again, a great first drive by Texas A&M. But Mississippi State stepping up, getting some pressure on Kenny Hill. 14-7, Bulldogs. More SEC West action tonight with LSU, Auburn, and 7 Eastern. Then out West in the Pac-12, UCLA, and Utah. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. How about Arizona? Big win Thursday at Oregon. Not only shaking up the Pac-12, but the playoff picture, even though we're early October. Oregon came into that game ranked number two. But they've shown flaws in previous games on that O-line in particular. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, I think those injuries up front really hurt them. Prescott going to keep it here across the 20 yard line, lowers the shoulder, and comes up just short of the first down. Met by the safety, Howard Matthews. Now that you've got Josh Robinson going, you can have you can start to get the, the running game going with Dak Prescott. You can't just come out and run him right off the bat. You got to have a compliment. Brandon Holloway gets the carry here. Sophomore giving Josh Robinson a breather, and he did not get the first down. So it's third down for Mississippi State. Yeah, and Holloway is really the, the change of pace. He's one of the fastest players on the Mississippi State team. They've got other backs. Ashton Shumpert, who checks in the game now, is a short yardage back, as well as Robinson. And a design quarterback run. Boy, it helps when you got a quarterback at 235. Also got with blocking on the right side of the offensive line and picked up five yards on third and one. You pull the guard and then you have Ashton Shumpert who's the lead back. Here he comes through. He's going to get a nice block on the linebacker. And that's Justin Malone who comes around through. That's a lot of beef coming through one hole. Hard to stop in short yardage. So a fresh set of down for Mississippi State. Leading by seven early second quarter. Off play action. Prescott firing deep and the pass is pulled in by Wilson. All the way to the 41 yard line. So another big play through the air by Dak Prescott. The Runya Wilson 6'5, and you just throw the ball on the back shoulder to him. There's no way of defending that. The Shazer Everett is not going to be able to defend the perfect throw. And this is what Wilson and Prescott practice every day in practice, and they've got it down to a tee. That was a 34 yard pass play. Now Prescott running the left side. And AM reads it well, only a gain of a yard. They had Justin Bass, Sean Washington in there for Texas AM. And if you're Mississippi State, you know you have in your back pocket, anytime you get man coverage, you can throw that route to Deronia Wilson. And he's either going to make a play on the ball or you're going to get pass interference call. That's a very, a very good thing to have in your back pocket when you're playing this kind of game. 
two catches 46 yards for Wilson six of seven passing over 100 yards for Prescott he'll throw here complete to Graham in the middle of the field and he's into the red zone of the 18 yard line. But they don't have Damian Lewis but Graham steps up here. That's a great design there a stack release you put your big wide receiver up front and then you put the speedy wide receiver behind him. Everybody goes with the run Wilson because he's killing you and then you slip the true freshman Graham right underneath him. 21 yard pickup. Mississippi State trying to go up two scores here. Play fake Prescott dumping it off to Shumpert. And Shumpert able to reach the 16 yard line before he's brought down by Donnie Baggs. That's a gain of about three or four on first down. And that's a sign of, a, of an experienced quarterback there. You take a shot in the red zone fringe area off of play action. He wanted to get the ball down the field to Robert Johnson in the end zone. He was covered. Check it down, gain four or five yards, and stay ahead of the chains. And penalty flagged down. I think Texas A&M had 12 men on the field. There was an Aggie trying to get to the sideline before the snap. Defense, Little taste of the own medicine for AM there. Going fast on offense. There he is right there at the top of the screen, trying to get off. So it's been four penalties now in Texas AM. A couple of them resulted in automatic first downs that kept drives going for Mississippi State. Now instead of second and seven and second and two and Prescott will run inside the 10 first down Washington on the tackle but first and goal Mississippi State from around the seven yard line. Well you watch Prescott you talked about it earlier Tebow you see some of that you see Cam Newton in him we talked about the creativity that you no know, Manziel obviously brought to the table that Prescott also has. He's really come into his own and, and now talking with him yesterday says the biggest change for me is I, I know the entire offense uh, whereas a year ago he was struggling to, to get it all down. Little double tight end look and the quarterback run Prescott has stood up at the four and this is really the quarterback that Dan Mullen has been looking for. He coached Tebow uh, at Florida and, and when he took the Mississippi State job now, this is the type of player he wanted to run his offense. Well, and he said the biggest thing that attracted him was not his size. He was only 6'4", 210 pounds when he came, but was his leadership and that it factor. He's going to throw here and break an attack for those miles, turning it upfield. And he'll come up short of the goal line, around the two-yard line. So it'll be third down and goal for Mississippi State. And a huge down here for Texas A&M. They have been on their heels in this first half on the defensive side. But if some way, somehow, they can get a stop here inside the five, be huge. And an injured Aggie. Can't see the number. Hard to see him anyway. Devontae Burns, we're told, is uh, a man who's shaken up. He is their starter at nickel. So far, Mississippi State with 238 yards of total offense. AM has 133, but remember they had about 70 on that opening drive. I think this would be a big loss for AM. We were talking with Mark Snyder, their defensive coordinator. They have been beaten up in the secondary because last week they played Arkansas and they had to have so many tackles. DeShazer Everett had 16 tackles. Devontae Harris, another 10. They are beat up in the secondary. So losing Burns is a big deal. Armani Watts, their true freshman starter at safety. He didn't practice until Thursday yeah. because he was injured from the AM. And this is going to be a physical game, trying to tackle Dak Prescott and Robinson and these guys. And they end an Arkansas game. So third down and goal for Mississippi State at the two. Prescott running and trying to dive to the end zone. He got in. Touchdown, Dak Prescott. He says more cowbell, please. Great second effort. He looked like he was stopped at the one yard line by Armani Watts. He's just so big on the lower body. That's one leg he's pushing off of there. Gets in and takes a 14 point lead. That was impressive. 
Looked like he was stopped. That is 21 straight points now for Mississippi State after the Sobies point after. And the 21st career rushing touchdown, the fourth of the year for Dak Prescott. Mississippi State by two touchdowns. Let's take a look back with our Cars.com key drive. Dak Prescott, the back shoulder throw to Jerunya Wilson, a 33-yard gain. And then out in space is Ashton Shepard. And then Prescott with a touchdown run to make it 21-7. But for Texas A&M, 14-point deficit is nothing. You know that was a great drive, 87 yards, 11 plays, 449 off the clock. A&M was down 14 to Arkansas in the fourth quarter last week and ended up beating <laughs> Arkansas in overtime. Got a touchback here. Close we'll check in with Reese Davis in the studio. All right, Dave, I want to let you know what's going on in the Big Ten. Ohio State, Maryland, game on ABC. Michael Thomas of Ohio State's receiver. Just throw him the blank ball. JT Parrott does, and Keyshawn Johnson's nephew makes a Keyshawn-esque catch. 21-3. Buckeyes are rolling over the Terps in their Big Ten home debut. Purdue and Illinois on ESPN2, and Purdue's Akeem Hunt finds plenty of turf and opportunity in the middle of the Illini defense tied to 14. Here, Reese, it's 21-7. Texas A&M with the ball back, and they'll run it on first down. And across the 30 is big Trey Carson at 235 pounds, met by a 250-pounder in McKinney. A gain of seven. Now Hill to throw, and wide open is Niederhofer. Good to see him back out there after he took a big shot. He's down, lost the ball, but ruled down at the 39. Gain of seven, another first down. A big drive here for AM. They give up back to back touchdown drives. They've got to get something going on offense. You mentioned down 14 last week to Arkansas. They needed two minutes to score 14 points to tie that game up. But... Eight minutes to go here in the second quarter. Hill, and over the middle is Niederhofer. Gets about eight yards to the 47-yard line. I wonder if Niederhofer's kind of replaced Malcolm Kennedy as yep. uh, Kenny Hill's go-to guy. Yeah, he has, and, and that's such an important position. It's the wide, wide receiver, almost replaces a tight end. Malcolm Kennedy makes so many plays in the middle of the field, and he's a third-down guy. So Niederhofer's got a big assignment today. No second down and one. Hill finds Reynolds trying to fist fight with the defender Matt Wells and the receiver Reynolds won that battle. It's a first down at midfield for Texas A&M. That's not easy to against 6'2", 220 Matt Wells. Now Reynolds is about 185. Well, well he weighs pounds. more than <laughs> These wide receivers are tall, but outside of Seals Jones, they don't have much weight on them. He's given up 30 pounds there. Hill again with good protection. Tried to dump it off, and the pass hit the fingertips of Niederhofer. A little bit too much on that throw. Big question coming into this game was Mississippi State and their secondary. Can they contain this passing game? I think they have so far. They have shored up the back end, forced short throws like that, and then rallied for the tackle, and it's worked. You know, so much talk about Mississippi State being 121st in the nation in pass defense, giving up 319 yards. A lot of that's misleading, though. As Hill rolls out and finds two defenders, but boy, look at him turn on the Jets as he reverses field inside the 40-yard line. Got the first down to the 37. They talk about him more as a passer than a runner, but he saw his ability to run the football there. He lost his shoe on the play. Well, and, and this, this, uh, this Mississippi State defense, this is shades of Johnny Manziel uh, last year. They chased him all over the field after 51 points they scored in this game. They didn't expect this from Kenny Hill. Well, Trey Williams with some beautiful moves to get positive yardage. He got three, but should have lost one. Kendrick Market made sure it was only a three-yard gain to the 35. This drive has taken two minutes. It's the eighth play coming up for Texas A&M, trailing by two scores. Kenny Hill fires incomplete. And he tried to hit 
Kyrian Parker who wasn't even on the roster. They added him because of the injury to Malcolm Kennedy. And so Parker, the first time he's been targeted today, maybe it was his mistake based on the reaction of the coach. And him yet to convert on third down. It's a third and seven. Hill throws. Niederhofer lost it, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Richie Brown. Brown brings it back into Texas A&M territory. Only the third interception all year for Kenny Hill. You may want to put this on Niederhofer, but this is all the quarterback. That ball should be out in front of the wide receiver, and it would be an easy conversion on third down. He throws it behind him, and that ball bounces right into Richie Brown's hands for the interception. It's the little things in accuracy from the quarterback position that make the big difference. And that time, Kenny Hill with a mistake. So first down for Mississippi State in AM territory. Movement by the left tackle, Lane Clausell, making his 34th start. career start. Offense, 75, five-yard penalty remains first down. Second infraction committed today by Mississippi State to a four by Texas A&M. And now you put a now you put a lot of pressure on your defense if you're AM. They've given up two long touchdown drives back to back, and now they're back on the field. Robinson on first and 15. Drop down in AM territory at the 49. Guys from the sideline down here, you really get the sense that Mississippi State's entire goal is to get into the red area utilize the clock and then capitalize on scoring opportunities if mississippi state's able to go up and down the field and score in the red zone texas a&m's not going to have enough offensive opportunities to put enough points back on the board they're dictating tempo and it's making a difference second down in 12 prescott and pass was juggled and then fumbled robinson caught it fumbled and it's recovered by texas a&m Devontae Harris with the fumble recovery. Robinson tried to secure it initially, couldn't, but then when he did, he lost the ball. Yeah, he bobbles it right off the bat, and that's close. I'm not sure if, if he ever had possession of that football. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, Devontae Burns chopped the ball out, but you're right. I don't know that Robinson, he pinned it to his leg, but did he do it long enough to mean that he had possession and that he became a runner. Yeah, he has, he's got to have possession of the football there and make a football move. And that was so bang, bang. I don't again. It's important. The ruling on the field is is how they're going to go here. And is there is there doubt that the ruling on the field is not accurate? And I, I don't know that there's that doubt. Yeah, it's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn that. And I think it's too close. I think that the end, I think the ruling on the field will stand. The official that was making that ruling was standing behind Robinson and couldn't see the ball. So he had to make a, a decision there. Unless there was a conference, he had to make a decision based off of not being able to see that ball clearly. If the play stands, this is huge for AM. They needed something good to happen on defense. Absolutely. As they're on pace to give up well over 500 yards. And now they're able to get to a Prescott earlier in the game when Miles Garrett got a sack, but that's really uh, the only pressure that Prescott has faced today. Well, this game could not have gone any better at the start for Mississippi State. You give up one touchdown drive, but you settle down on defense and you start to exert your will in the running game. And that's so important for Dan Mullen because he After wants to further burn the clock. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Texas a &M. So they do said they had enough video evidence to confirm that he had possession. So a big giveaway here by Mississippi State with 526 remaining. Kenny Hill and company will take over near midfield. Hill is 13 of 22 for 114 yards and a touchdown. His 18th touchdown pass. They're going to run the ball, and there's nothing for Brandon Williams, swallowed by big Chris Jones. 
preseason All-American, 6'5", 300 pounds. There's nothing doing on the inside running that football against this Mississippi State team. They are too stout for AM to run the ball in between the tackles. Hill will throw now. Pressure coming, and Hill's pass is intercepted again. And guess who it is? It's Richie Brown. Two picks this quarter on consecutive possessions for Richie Brown. And now Kenny Hill with as many interceptions today as he had all season coming in. And Kenny Hill, for the first time this season, rattled. Thrown two balls to the other team on the road. He has this Mississippi State crowd thinking they can win. ESPN College Football is brought to you by Allstate, proud supporters of college football. Are you in good hands? And Ford Service, go with confidence. Big question coming into this game. Could you get pressure on Kenny Hill with this great offensive line up front? Take a look. Finally, Mississippi State, Chris Jones right up the middle. They're starting to get some pressure. Take a look right there, trying to release that ball. Where are you going to go downfield? There, there's a coverage downfield. He tries to dump the ball off. And when you're under duress, sometimes your accuracy suffers. And that time, Texas A&M pace. With Mississippi State leading 21-7, we continue with the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Richie Brown on consecutive possessions with interceptions. And right now, Dak Prescott heavily outplaying his counterpart, Kenny Hill. Prescott has one incompletion. He also has a touchdown on the ground. Kenny Hill has thrown two picks, as many as he threw in the first five games. First down at the 48-yard line of Mississippi State, and a run play as Holloway gets near the 40-yard line. Gain of seven. Alonzo Williams tripped him up. Boy, if they can get Holloway involved in this running game, and you you have him as a complement to Robinson and, and Prescott run the football, this could be a wicked rushing attack. Robinson fumbled on the last possession. Holloway gets it again and has the first down. Wrestled to the ground at the 35 by Howard Matthews, but Mississippi State really dominating at the line of scrimmage right now. You see the speed. It's just got a different speed that he can get to the perimeter faster than Robinson or Prescott can, and so it puts different pressure on the defense. They expect the running back in one hole, but he's two holes outside. There's Prescott. Spins away from one defender and gets to the 30, a five-yard gain. How about the run-pass differential? It's 2-1 to one in favor of rushes right now for Mississippi State. And that's what they want to do, right? Because not only are they having success with it, but they're burning clock, and they want to protect their defense. That's the recipe for Mississippi State, especially at home. Prescott's already got 12 attempts on the ground. They want to get him 20, 25 rush attempts, so they're right where they want to be. He's got more rushing attempts than passing attempts. He's 10 of 11 through the air for 131 yards. So Alonzo Williams was shaken up for Texas A&M. And it couldn't be a better recipe for Dak Prescott, the efficiency, throwing the football. That's why he's been so good this year. One of the tops in all of college football and efficiency throwing the ball, 10 of 11. When he throws the ball, they're making yards. Holloway back there with him again. Second down and five inside the 30. Prescott steps up. He's got a running lane. Got the first down and slides to the 20-yard line. A 10-yard run by Dak Prescott. I was talking with him yesterday. He said, you know, I really want to throw the ball. I don't want to run when I get back there to pass. But if there's a lane, I can't resist sometimes. He's changed his mindset when they drop back to throw the ball from run first to pass first and only run when the lane's there, and it's really helped him. So first down at the 20, and this is going to be a throwback to the quarterback. Prescott is open inside the 10, and it takes three guys to get him down. He has three career receiving touchdowns on plays like that, so it's not like the defense hasn't seen it on film, but unable to stop it. Well, here comes Miles. He's going to come around and, and, and get the ball from, from Dak Prescott. This is pretty well defensed. 
by Texas A&M. Great reaction by Howard Matthews, the safety, to get back over there and save the touchdown. First down and goal at the nine. Mississippi State trying to go up three scores. Inside run, Shumpert, and he gets nothing. Brought down to the line of scrimmage by Jay Arnold, who's moved inside this year from defensive end. Yeah, and this is the area where you really want Josh Robinson in the game. He's, he's just so low to the ground and pumps his legs so much that as good a back as Shumpert is, this is the territory where we want two guys to touch the ball, either Robinson or Prescott. And now both of them are in the game. Here in two minutes to go here in the half. Second and goal. Prescott pulls it back and throws incomplete. Too high, perhaps. To run you, Wilson got his hands on it, but couldn't secure it. That's just the second incompletion for Dak Prescott. Uh, this is one that Dak Prescott's going to want to have back. Had the perfect look, wide open on the slant, and that ball just gets away from him a little bit, and he knows it. His reaction, that's one. I mean, that, when you're playing against a good team like Texas A&M with explosive offense, Tom's right. His point, you get down here in the red zone, you have got to convert touchdowns, and that's one that, mark in your mind, if a &M ends up coming back in this game, that'll be one that Dak Prescott kicks himself for. They've been pretty good so far in the red zone, three out of three with touchdowns, and they make it four out of four. Third down and goal. Prescott in the pocket, slings it, and a diving catch for a touchdown by Wilson. Prescott went right back to the big guy. Fifth touchdown on the season for Wilson. And number 12 for Prescott, who also has a rushing score here in the first half. Largest deficit that AM has faced as it is now 28 to 7. Mississippi State. Oh, and how impressive. The first three times they score, they go down there and punch it in on the ground, and now a drop back pass from Mississippi State goes right back to Wilson, and they make it right from the play before. Mississippi State takes a 21-point lead on a touchdown pass to Wilson. This is the true freshman, Jamoro Graham. He's going to take two defenders on the post. Bass is the linebacker, and Armani Watts, the safety. They're going to double team. This is the matchup, one-to-one-on-one -on -one -on -one with Deronia Wilson. Graham takes two, and there's nobody left underneath for Wilson. That's to Shazer Everett, who falls down. Good play design from Dan Mullen. That's poor execution on the back end from AM. and And Mississippi State with a three-touchdown lead. Now, a lot of people wondered, you know, the Bulldogs won at LSU. Could they do it again? They haven't beaten top ten teams in consecutive weeks in school history. Noel running it out here for Texas A&M. And he's hit at the 15. And will not make it to the 20. Let's go to the studio and check in with Reese. Dave Lexus halftime reports coming up. We'll talk plenty about our game that's going on right now on a great first Saturday of October. Ohio State's making themselves right at home in Big Ten home debut for Maryland. And we'll also talk about Alabama and Ole Miss where the guest picker, Katy Perry, I guess, put the hottie into hottie toddy. Unless maybe that's Corso. Mark and Lou are here. We'll see you in a bit. I think she picked Mississippi State, too. Did she? She's in the state of Mississippi. She might as well just be safe and take both state schools. 152 on the clock. Plenty of time for Texas A&M to go the length of the field. Trey Carson. Oh, man, what a play by McKinney. Matt Wells there, too, but we're going to be saying Bernardrick's name a lot over the next few years, maybe the next 10 years. We're starting to get the sense now that the Mississippi State defensively is having confidence on defense. You know, you come into this game and last year they gave up 51 points to a &M, and now you wonder if you, you can stay with this offense. They're, they're up to the task. Hill has thrown interceptions on consecutive possessions, finds Seals Jones, who scoots out of play and appears to have a first down with a minute 20 left. All three timeouts remaining for the Aggies. Yeah, this is a big drive for Kenny Hill's confidence. You know, going in before the half, I know Jake Spavital and, and Kevin Sumlin would love to get their, uh, their young quarterback back on track. 
That's five catches for Seals Jones. Neither Hoffer has four. And Jake Spavito without. And Malcolm Kennedy is the number two receiver in the SEC. He was short, so it's third and one. Kenny Hill gets the first down. Took a lick, though, from Deontay Evans. Clock will stop as they move the chains. 115 remaining in the half. You get the sense that Mississippi State defensively is just licking their chops when AM gets in that tight set. They say, this is our kind of ball game. Well, there's 300 pounders on the defensive line, and then a linebacker, you got the big guy in the middle at 250. Hill. A short throw to Pope. He breaks a tackle. Stays in bounds at the 45-yard line. And tackled at the 47. A gain of about 17 that time. Timeout taken by Texas A&M. So that will leave the Aggies with two. 53 seconds remaining here in the first half. Well, mentioned that Katy Perry picked Mississippi State. As we were talking yesterday, sizing things up, you and I both thought Mississippi State could definitely win this game, but are you surprised at how easy things are looking for them offensively? You know, I, we didn't really know. I mean, we saw Mississippi State against LSU, and that was an outstanding game. They they not only beat LSU, they bludgeoned yeah, LSU. They it was 34-10 to 10 at the start of the fourth quarter. Yeah. Dak Prescott and Josh Robinson, that combination was way too much, but LSU didn't look like the same kind of LSU defense. I had questions about that coming into this game, but... Dak Prescott has been as advertised. The game is not too big for him. And what we've seen is Kenny Hill is the one with a little bit of question mark and a big game as to how he's going to react. Well, you had some questions about him coming into this game. He's young. He's still a young player. We, we, we forget that he's only playing in his, his fifth game. And certainly yeah, there's a lot of question marks that every young player has to answer. Request for timeout. The officials on the field were buzzed by the replay crew. The challenge is that the player stepped out of bounds prior to the stop. Spotted, spotted at. The play is in the further review. So they're going to look to see where Pope stepped out. And look, the, the, the height machine was turned up to 100 on Kenny Hill after week one when it wasn't even sure that he was going to be their starting quarterback this year. But he's played very well to this point. And let's see, did he step out? Can't tell from that angle. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think he did. Looked like he did. But maybe he's short of the first down. They'd have to put some time back on the clock and have to figure out where to spot it. This may take a little bit of time. You can see there pretty clearly his foot is out. And, and I agree with you. I mean, it, and it's unfair to the kids when that hype machine gets going and they come out on the road against South Carolina in a big game, and he has a great game, a record-breaking game, as you see that, that foot out there. And then they, they don't play anybody for a while, and then they come back and, and they have a, a, a tight game against Arkansas where Kenny Hill didn't play great through three quarters. And, and you could argue that they should have lost that game. But, but you learn about him in that situation, coming back and throwing a couple of touchdown passes to win the game, and all of a sudden your team starts to believe in him and he gets that confidence. But this is a different kind of challenge. This is a different defense than Arkansas. This is a Mississippi State defense that has designs on being one of the bigger, best ones in the SEC this, this year. And, it's hard to argue that with the way they play so far. It looks like it's about the 37 yard line where he steps out. And usually when you have replay that's going to overturn the ruling of the field, they take some time to figure out, OK, where do exactly need to spot the ball? You could argue he stepped out there also. And uh, how much time is on the clock? Right now it's at 53 seconds and the ball at the 48 yard line. And look, Kenny Hill, for, for what he did week one, he, he deserved the hype, but yep. it, it's gotten to the point where it's a little bit out of control. And, and, you know, Kevin Sumlin, I think, need to look at him, too, and say, oh, man, you know, his offense and the type of coach that he is and the type of players that he has around Kenny Hill, this is one of the better guys maybe in college football. Well, and talking to him last night, there's clearly a chip on his shoulder and a chip on everybody on this team's shoulder with the way that people looked at this season and said, you know, no Johnny Manziel, there's no chance for Texas A&M, and that's that could be further from the truth. I mean, this team, they got plenty of talent. They've gotten better on the defensive side. They found a quarterback that, that they want to invest in. They've got two quarterbacks, quite frankly. Kyle Allen, the backup, true freshman. It was neck and neck between Kenny Hill and Kyle Allen. And, and Kevin Sumlin was telling us it was they charted over 200 throws through their fall camp. And there was only a separation between uh, Ke Kenny Hill and Kyle Allen of 3% on their performance. It was a very tight decision. And, Luke, you know all about Kevin Sumlin. Sumlin and the recruiting job he's done with Kyle Allen, Speedy Noyle, and also on the defensive side, Miles Garrett. 
identifying. No doubt they've done a great job when it comes to identifying talent, but more importantly, looking at needs on their board. So if you look at Texas A&M last year, the year before, where do they need to address an upgrade? It's in the defensive front seven. We know they've got skill on offense. You talk about Kyle Allen, he could be the future. But defensively, it's all about Miles Garrett being that key cog to start building a defensive front. After further review, the runner stepped out of bounds with a 38 and a half yard line. That will make it second and one. The clock will start and the snap. Please put 57 seconds on the game clock. 57. So they, they added just four seconds back. Clock will start and the snap. Texas A&M down 21, the largest comeback in school history. They were down 21. Chick-fil-A Bowl 2013 beat. What a game that Dude. was. Yeah, That's they were down 38-17 at half. Well, we know they have the firepower. There is no question about that. So A&M should get its uh, timeout back. They have not announced that yet. As they called timeout after Pope was tackled in the middle of the field. And so three timeouts remaining for AM. Second down and one on the 38 yard line. Four man rush. Hill's pass is caught by Seals Jones. He stepped out. And boy, Mississippi State was thinking a pick six. Beniquez Brown tried to jump that route. And if I'm Mississippi State, Beniquez Brown, I'm not I'm not trying to pick the ball off here and make a huge play and be a savior. Up, tw up 21 in the first half. Keep everything in front of you. Don't give this team anything cheap before halftime. Wide open is Speedy Noyle inside the 35-yard line. Brought down at the 30. 46 seconds remaining. Clock will stop as they reset the chains. a and still with all of its timeouts. Tevez Calhoun, the corner, got up a little bit gimpy in that last, that last play. They need him. First down at the 30-yard line of Mississippi State. Pressure coming. Hill steps up, has a running lane, cuts it back inside the 20, and Hill to the 16-yard line. And Kevin Sumlin, I think, is going to use a timeout here. Again, the clock will start again on the ready for play. No, going to save the timeouts. No surprise. Why not? You got three of them. Yeah. Wasting seven or eight seconds here. He'll throws a fade to Noyle. It's caught. There's a flag down. He was out of bounds. But again, there's a penalty marker down at the two-yard line. Likely pass interference here. And they're going to get Will Redmond. Again, Tavez Calhoun got hurt on the previous play. They had to take him out, and Will Redmond is his replacement. And right away, I think that's why Kevin Sumlin didn't call the timeout. He wanted to keep Redmond on the field. There is no foul on the play. The official made to throw his hat because the receiver stepped out of bounds. So no foul. So now you get 19 seconds. You're back at the 16-yard line again for second down. He's trying to throw his hat and grab yep. his flag. <laughs> They're in different parts of the body. <laughs> And normally you see the side judge will throw a hat when a player steps out of bounds prior to receiving a pass. So 19 seconds left. Mississippi State dialing up pressure. Hill's pass is caught. Niederhofer tackled inbounds. They'll have to call timeout. 12 seconds left. It'll be third down and about three. Uh, that was a great catch by Ke or great tackle by Kendrick Market. They brought all out pressure trying to force I think Jeff Collins was trying to force a, a sack here maybe get him out of field goal range and if market doesn't make this tackle it's a touchdown here they come they're all coming you can't block all of them off the edge you got to get rid of the football an accurate throw but market gets him on the ground now Monday night Russell Wilson and the Seahawks are on the road in the NFC to take on the Redskins 8.15 Eastern on ESPN starts at 6 with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Kirk Cousins now taking over for RG3. Roughed up on Thursday night against the Giants. Talk about surprises with Kenny Hill throwing back-to-back -back picks. They had already anointed Cousins as the guy in Washington. He throws four picks in six possessions. <laughs> 
Mama said there'd be days like that. You know, sometimes you play long enough, you're going to have days at the quarterback spot that, that aren't going to go your way. But a lot of time for Kenny Hill to redeem himself, and he's looked good on this possession. Third down and three with 12 seconds left and the ball at the nine-yard line. Play 10 of the drive coming up. They got man-to-man -man coverage. It looks like Mississippi State wants to come after him. Man-to-man -man down here, three on three. Seven in the box. Here they come. A fade to the end zone, and again overthrown. Josh Reynolds, the intended receiver. That's two fade attempts that Kenny Hill has not even given the receiver a chance to catch. Yeah, you got to throw the ball in, in bounds. And this is not a great route from Josh Reynolds here. You're not in great position there. You're not leaving a whole lot of space for your quarterback. You have to fight as a receiver to save space for your quarterback to throw it to the outside shoulder. So that's not all on Kenny Hill. That's on both Reynolds and Hill. So now it is fourth down, and they're going to try a field goal with Josh Lambeau. Only one miss on the season. Tough angle, 27 yards, but the kick is good with two seconds remaining in the half. So they get points, but I think Mississippi State will take that as a win. Looked like Texas A&M was going to score, but a couple of incompletions on fade patterns, and they have to settle for three points. Looking at the rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A, Florida State, number one team in the country, ABC 330. Well, that Oregon, Oregon loss, yeah. that Oregon loss brings all kinds of scenarios back into the equation. You think Michigan State, you know, if they can win against Nebraska and, and run the table. But more than anything else, it brings the, the conversation of two teams in the SEC West being con potentially considered for that playoff to the top of the conversation. So do you think, a lot of people think that hurts Michigan State, that Oregon loss. Well, yeah, they needed it to happen in order for them to have a chance potentially to get back in. Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I understand that argument. I just think at the end of the day, Michigan State needed something like that to happen to get back in the conversation because their best bet is a one-loss championship, and they're going to need some help, quite frankly. And meanwhile, you got Oklahoma TCU coming up. That's a big game. TCU looks like a much improved team. Now, Oklahoma's been outstanding so far this year. Baylor has Texas. So some big games in the top 10 involving Big 12 teams as well as all the great SEC matchups today. Alabama Ole Miss and tonight on ESPN, LSU and Auburn. Two seconds remaining. See if Bertolette squibs it here. One of the up men, nope, gonna kick it deep. Here's Robert Johnson. And Johnson out to the 30, and that's the end of the first half. Mississippi State will get the ball to start the second half after putting up 28 points in the first. Jack Prescott, brilliant. 141 yards passing and a touchdown, only two incompletions. He also had a rushing score. Kenny Hill had a touchdown pass, but he also threw two interceptions. Here's Tom. Coach, you settled down on defense there after the first try. Started to change the tempo of this game. How would you characterize the performance of this team in the first half? I think we played pretty well. We made some critical errors. You don't want to give up points right before the half right there, obviously. And uh, we turned it over a couple times on offense, which you can't do in big games. But I think our guys are playing well, and it's going to be an exciting second half. Yeah, obviously you're going to be in a battle here. We saw A&M come back and beat Arkansas last week. But in this second half, what do you say to your football team at halftime to keep battling? Well, we, we said before, I mean, I thought this is going to be a 60-minute game, whether you're you're up big, down big, it's close. I mean, you know both these teams, I think, can score points. So you got to play until that final whistle, and every single play is going to matter. we got to try to win every play. All right, Coach, go talk to him. And we asked Dan Mullen yesterday, Lugs, you know, is this a special game? He said, well, I mean, they're all big. They're all special in the SEC West. And his team has an 18-point lead at half, 28 to 10. They got Auburn here next week. Will they still be unbeaten? One half to go. Lexus halftime report right now with Reese, Lou, and Mark. Watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week.
Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. Kenny Hill with two interceptions in the first half. Dak Prescott had two incompletions. He also had a rushing touchdown. 28-10, Mississippi State in a battle of unbeaten. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Alongside Brian Greasy, I'm Dave Patch, Tom Luganville down on the field. So Mississippi State playing without its center, without its best receiver. You got guys moved around all on the offensive line, yet they have almost 300 yards of total offense and 28 points. And it's been balanced. On the ground, 140 yards, and then through the air, 150 yards from Dak Prescott, who's been 11 of 13. And I think what you've seen is their ability to run the ball has forced Texas A&M to get seven and eight guys in the box. Josh Robinson has gone off in the first half. The combination of he and Dak Prescott, that element you have to respect if you're Texas A&M on the defensive side. And when you do bring that safety down, Dak Prescott has shown that he has confidence to throw the ball down the field against man-to-man -man coverage here. It's Joe Morrow. That leads to a touchdown. Later on in the first half, it's Deronia Wilson with a matchup nightmare on the outside. The combination, the balance inside and outside run and pass is what Mississippi State has been living on all season. And the first half has been no different. Two to one run and pass ratio for Mississippi State. Two to one pass run ratio for Texas A&M. Kenny Hill, 31 attempts in the first half. Uh, we both were guessing around 40 attempts likely here in the second half. Robert Johnson on the five yard line as Mississippi State will get the ball to start the second half and they'll have it around their 24 yard line. Let's bring in Tom Lukenville. Well, guys, I caught up with Kevin Sumlin just as he came out of the locker room. Very calm, very poised, but he just said flat out, two things are hurting us. Number one, offensively, not having Malcolm Kennedy is such a pivotal part of the middle of the field passing game. And if you notice in that first half, they didn't attack the middle of the field. Secondly, he can't get his team off the field on defense on third down. And until that happens, then it's going to be a long day. He knows it. They're going to try and get a little bit more pressure with some different looks in the defensive front. Mississippi State, Tom, five of six on third down in that first half. Play fake. Prescott with all day to throw. And that one is caught along the sideline. They haven't ruled yet whether he was in bounds or not. They're saying now, yeah, it's a catch by Deronia Wilson. This is the third time in this game that they've thrown that back shoulder fade to Deronia Wilson. That one was the most difficult catch of all. But again, great execution from Dak Prescott and Deronia Wilson in the passing game. So it's a gain of about 17, yard, uh, 17 yards. Now Prescott taking off to the 45 and tackled just short of the first down by Jordan Masco Giovanni. Well, Prescott, as we mentioned, just two incompletions, 157 passing yards and a score. He's run for over 50 yards and a touchdown. Remember coming in, three straight games, 200-plus passing yards and 100-plus rushing yards. They get the first down here on second and short as the pass pulled in by Gabe Miles. And I think, Dave, you know, you come out, you're up 18 in the second half, and Dan Mullen, who's now calling the plays, he started doing that again last year. The approach he's taken here, the first drive of the second half, is right on point. There is no, there's no, they're going to continue to have that gas, the foot on the gas pedal with this offense. Prescott. Looking deep, instead throws to his check down Robinson. They tried to push him out, and he actually got a couple extra yards. A gain of eight to the 36. And he knows full well, Dan Mullen does, how explosive a and is on offense. And watch the game against Arkansas. So but this is an important drive, I think, for Mississippi State to establish their mindset and attitude in the second half. a and got down last week 14, but I don't think come back in 25 down at Mississippi State for the score here. Another first down on the quick toss to Jamal. Graham. So Mississippi State with the ball at the 29-yard line of Texas A&M. And again, no pressure at all on the quarterback. They got a sack on one of the first series by Miles Garrett, but that's it in terms of pressure. Robinson trying to get outside, stiff arming, and dragged down at the 25-yard line. The four-yard game, the uh, coaches on the near side wanted a uh, Horse collar, but no, that was not a horse collar. That was a legal tackle. A stiff arm here from Josh Robinson. So hard to bring down. They nicknamed him the bowling ball because he's only 5'9", 215 pounds. Pump fake, Prescott off the double move, fires incomplete, trying to hit Graham. 
Damian Lewis, remember, is out, so Graham is playing his position in the slot. Yeah, and they run a little double move, trying to get Graham on the outside. He's on the right side of your screen. He's going to run out, and then he's going to come right behind. This ball is well thrown. Graham's just got to make that play. And that's where they missed Jamie on Lewis. But in all honesty, up 18 in the first half, this offense hasn't missed a whole lot without Lewis on the field. Only one time they have not converted on third down. Plus, there were two penalties on AM that resulted in Mississippi State first downs in the first half. They'll bring pressure here. It's picked up. Prescott's pass nearly picked off. And that might have been a score for Devontae Harris. He had a beat on it, but could not get the interception. And now Mississippi State might go for it on fourth down. Uh, it's a long throw from the opposite half. Trying to throw just a hitch on the outside and when you have a back out there and you have a good corner like Devontae Harris Devontae Harris knows that Robinson's is not going to run by him So he's just baiting that quarterback to throw that ball knowing that he can jump on it and quite frankly Dak Prescott's lucky to get away with that There's some wind that's one of the reasons they were considering going for it 42 yard attempt and It is no good Came off the foot of Evan Sobiesk awkwardly or to tell him let me get tip at the line, but it's no good. He missed three in six attempts last year. That's his first miss in three attempts this year. It's a big one. Now for today's Aflac trivia question. Scott Field here at Davis Wade Stadium celebrating his 100th anniversary. It's second oldest stadium in the FBS. What is the oldest FBS stadium? My, my guesses were in the Ivies. Well, for uh, those out there wondering, along with yourself, I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's the house that Tom Luganville built. <laughs> oh. Good luck with that one. Uh, he went to so many schools, you know. <laughs> So it could be several, actually. Kenny Hill to throw on first down. And a missed tackle as Seals Jones is free. Spins out of a tackle attempt at the 30 as well. Pushed out around the 31. So a good pickup of about six on first down. They have targeted him a lot. He's got seven catches, 54 yards, and two or three more times in that first half they went to him where there were incompletions. Out of the empty set, Hill moving to his right, facing pressure, and drilled back at the 20. Preston Smith, who for three straight weeks was the SEC Defensive Lineman of the Week, was back there along with Ryan Brown. Maybe the biggest surprise, or not even a surprise, but factor in this game has been the pressure on Kenny Hill from this Mississippi State defensive line. Everybody's been talking about Texas A&M's offensive line, but this defensive line, Preston Smith, Chris Jones, Caleb Ewells, Brian Brown, they have got after this offensive line for AM. Third down and 15. They're just one of seven on third down. And it's a quarterback run. Hill tackled at the 30. Good ankle tackle. Otherwise, Hill might have picked up the first down, but it was Brown. Looked like he was on the ground, just stuck his hand up. And got the shoelaces, and so it'll be a punt. And as good as they have been on that defensive front, we all know that the real question is, can they continue through four quarters? Because that's the game of Texas a and They're going to try to make it a fast-paced game in the second half. And even though they're down 18, can that defensive line continue with the pace? And, boy, that's rare for the All-American off the side of the foot of Kayser. The Mississippi State will have decent field position around the 28-yard line. Well, there is talk about Mississippi State's offense, but how about the defense here today? Our athletic trivia question was, since Dave Wade, uh, Davis Wade Stadium is the second oldest stadium, what's the oldest? Let's get the answer from the expert, Tom Luganville. Well, guys, it's not Palomar College. <laughs> Not Eastern Kentucky, <laughs> so I'm figuring it's Georgia Tech. I'm going with the Ramblin' Wreck. Final right. answer. Yep, Bobby Dodd Stadium. Very there good. You go. And uh, just for fans who may not remember that uh, Tom actually played there, uh, look look at that picture. Mm. The uh, ACC Newcomer of the Year. He's happy after the team got a field goal. All 160 pounds of me soaking wet. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't need to phone a friend for that answer down there. <laughs> Here's Josh Robinson, he didn't go down. 
Hard to get into the ground. 5'8", 220 pounds. Brought down at the 35. It's a 70-yard gain. You wonder, with Mississippi State's ability to run the football, you know, is A&M going to have enough possessions? You know, yeah. At some point, the Bulldogs are going to score again. Prescott in trouble, and they finally get to him. It's Alonzo Williams who sacks him at the 29. And that's just good coverage downfield. You're going you're gonna to see downfield roll it, guys. There's nowhere to go with this football. He looks left. Great coverage on the curl flat. Alonzo Williams breaks free on the inside and gets around Claiborne, the guard. First time they've really gotten pressure in the backfield on Dak Prescott. And can AM get off the field on third down back to back possessions? Prescott taking off, and he's dropped at the 32 yard line by Miles Garrett. So it'll be a punt here for Mississippi State and a missed field goal on their last possession. And, and what happens there is Dan Mullen wants to continue to be aggressive. So he throws the ball in drop back fashion on second down. And, and your quarterback, you take a sack and you get behind the down and distance and, and you go three and out. So now you give the ball right back. So you want to have a mix of being aggressive in the second half and not allowing Texas A&M to come back, but you also have to be smart. First three and out today for Mississippi State. Great punt. And the fair catch made just outside the 20 by Speedy Noyle. Uh, Kenny Hill has been the talk of college football in September. Will he continue to be here in October? ESPN College Football is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. With Mississippi State leading Texas A&M 28 to 10, we continue the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Dak Prescott showing his leadership, talking to everybody on the sideline. Yeah, that's a big deal. 18. That's a big deal. You know, you come out, go three and out, not a great drive, but but your leader, your quarterback, and Dak Prescott continues to keep his head up, and that communication on the sideline is big. Kenny Hill threw two picks in the first half, also a touchdown pass. Remember, they scored a touchdown on their first drive. Only three points since. Brandon Williams gets the carry. And up to the 25-yard line for four yards. Beniquez Brown on the tackle. You know, on the AM side, you know, it was so fiery with Johnny Manziel. You see a different demeanor with Kenny Hill. Now, that's worked for them so far this year. Off to a 5-0 start for the first time since 2001. Second down. Hill looking downfield and a diving catch made by Parker, who wasn't even on the roster coming into the game. But he's out there because of the injury to Kennedy, and it's a 15-yard pickup. That's a big throw for Kenny Hill to get a little bit of confidence. From the 39. Oh, a dangerous throw there as Niederhofer lost the ball, and they're going to rule incomplete. Incomplete pass as Kenny Hill threw that one into traffic trying to set up a screen. That's a great play by Matt Wells, the linebacker number 22. He fights off the block by Seals Jones. He's the one that makes that play. In that position, you diagnose that bubble screen. Matt Wells does a great job of doing it. And, you know, I don't think he had possession there. The ruling in the field is incomplete. Remember, he had a ball that he could have caught that then popped up into the air and was intercepted. The first thrown by Kenny Hill. And Niederhofer has been thrown to a lot in this game, again, because of the injury to Kennedy. And they're going to look at this here. Looping on the field was an incomplete pass. The previous play is under further review. Did he have possession and become quote a runner, even though he was in the process of being tackled before the ball came out? Yeah, again, he's he catches the ball pretty clean. Again, it's got to be indisputable evidence here to overturn this. And the fact that it's called a incompletion on the field, I, I just don't know that. Yeah, Wells is on him right it. away, right as he get, catches that football. You got one foot down, and then the second foot comes down. I, just, I agree with you. I don't. It's darn close. And it was recovered by Mississippi State. So if it's overturned, it's going to be Bulldog football. But it's not going to be. After further review, the ruling on the field was confirmed. Incomplete pass. 
just never had possession. So it's second down on the 39-yard line of Texas A&M. You know, we were talking about Matt Wells. He's an outstanding player, great athlete, one of the best on this Mississippi State team. The coaches were telling us last night that he's actually blind in his right eye. He, he can't see 80% blind in that eye. And so for him to be able to play at this level, really amazing story. Kenny Hill on second down, over the middle, incomplete. Almost picked off again on a redirection. That was Speedy Noyle had to go off his hands. It's third down and ten. You see the accuracy from Kenny Hill is a little off today. With the interception of Nieder offered, that one is out in front of Noyle. And this should be picked off by Bernardrick McKinney. That's a missed opportunity. And there was nothing but green grass between him and the end zone. Third down and ten. Kenny Hill only one completion on third down today. Hill incomplete another drop. This one by Seals Jones. He's not getting a lot of help either, Kenny Hill. And it's fourth down. Several drops here today by the Aggies. These are the plays that went their way against Arkansas. The, the touchdown to tie it at the end made by Reynolds. These are the kinds of throw in tight windows. And it looked like uh, Seals Jones was expecting somebody to hit him right off the bat. Kayser. Much better punt this time. And Graham, who muffed a punt in the first quarter, fields that one cleanly at the 16. Midway through the third quarter, 28 to 10, Mississippi State in a battle of unbeatens. By 14 over Iowa State. And Reese here in Starkville in one of the biggest college football Saturdays in the Magnolia State's history. Uh, so far, so good for the team south of Oxford. 18 point lead. Ole Miss hosts Alabama a little bit later today. And back to throw. Prescott moves to his right and dumps it off. Griffin gets the first down. Out past the 30. Tackled by Everett at the 33, 17 yards. This is what Dak Prescott has improved on the most from a year ago. Moving in the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, throwing from an awkward angle, finding his check down. That's an outstanding play right there from Dak Prescott. If he can do that consistently, he's hard to stop. Here's Holloway. Again, a lot of running room, and he's got the first down. Wrapped up at the 36. A 13-yard gain, and now Prescott, by the way, has 195 passing yards. He also has 51 rushing yards. And now Holloway, Griffin starting to get into the act, too, from the running back position. Another run play and a huge hole. Holloway inside the 10. Out of bounds inside the five at the three. They are gashing the Aggies defense on the ground. 51 yard run by Brandon Holloway. And Mississippi State quickly to the line looking to snap the ball. You see he's out there at the three. So first and goal. Prescott will keep pushing the pile. And the whistle blows. He's brought down at the one, second and goal. Dave, there was a great block on that long run from the wide receiver, Deronia Wilson. He came in and got a great block on the safety. Not only is he making plays in a passing game, but now he's starting to exert himself in a run game, and Mississippi State's running backs are benefiting. Another run for Prescott. Pushes to the goal line. Somehow got out of there and hit Pater. Touchdown, Mississippi State. And Dak Prescott climbing into the Heisman conversation. And the first weekend of October, 
with three total touchdowns, one through the air, and now two on the ground. Extra point is blocked, though. So it's a 24-point lead for Mississippi State. 6.38 remaining in the third. Go back and take a look at the big play of that drive, the run by Holloway. First off, there's only five guys in the box. Bass is the only guy left in the box. You're going to see Deronya Wilson come from the X receiver position and seal off Howard Matthews on the second level. Perfect execution. There you see the block by Wilson. Great execution up front from Mississippi State. Texas A&M had to come down and get some safeties involved in protection. Here he is down here again. And when they come down and Howard Matthews comes down, Deronia Wilson just picks him off. He takes two. There's nobody left for Holloway. And then Prescott looked like he was going to get stopped. No. Touchdown. And in talking with the coaches for Mississippi State yesterday, Dan Mullen in particular, he said, you know, we learned something from the LSU game. He started at the end of the game to take out the starters when they had a healthy lead over LSU. <laughs> and it came down to the last play. LSU came back, and Mississippi State just hung on, intercepting a Hail Mary attempt. We'll see if this is handled differently <laughs> I don't think today. you're going to see the, the starters coming out anytime soon. Dak Prescott's going to be in there. I just no, mean in the fourth that, quarter. We got a long ways to go even before the coaches even think about that. But, but a big play in that game was, you know, they, they took out the offensive line. Their backup center, Archie Muniz, goes in there and snaps it over Dak Prescott's head. That was the big the big one, but I don't I don't see that happening. That mistake being made by Dan Mullen again. But maybe the story has been the Mississippi State defense giving up just three points since that first possession. Here's Noyle on the return. And it means something good to happen. And it won't happen here. Let's go to Reese in the studio. All right, guys, time to go inside the he headset with AT&T. Getting right inside Jeff Driscoll's helmet. Tennessee is just swarming and swamping the Florida offense. Gators can't do anything. Florida defense trying to keep a minute. Kick three field goals. Volunteers may only need nine points to snap that nine-game losing streak against the Gators. Well, you know, the SEC West is wide open because of how good everybody is. Well, the SEC East is wide open, too. Maybe for different reasons. The teams aren't as strong. But we saw Tennessee last week. That's a team on the rise. Trey Carson brought down for a loss of one by Jamerson Love and Chris Jones. You know, when Texas A&M came out of the locker room, off the top, I referenced how calm and poised Kevin Sumlin was, but the team was telling an entirely different story. Poor body language, a lack of enthusiasm, and if you look at that last drive on defense, on the big Holloway run, Texas A&M can't get lined up. Just discombobulated right now, guys. On second and 12, he'll ask a completion to Josh Reynolds. Rolling down to the 28, so he'll come up about four yards shy of a first down. Big third down here, AM is just one of nine third down conversions. They came in number seven in the nation, over 50% of third down. And at what point are you in four down territory? I know it's five and a half left, but. And that's got to be a flag. Here it comes. Niederhofer was mugged. At the 38 yard line, got tackled by Bernardrick McKinney. It'll be a first down here via penalty. Pass interference, defense, number 50. The penalty will place the ball at the spot of the foul and include an automatic first down. Yeah, Bernard McKendry knew he was beat. Niederhofer got underneath him. It's a good call there. You know, every team's going to have adversity in the course of a season, and Texas A&M had it last week and they've found a way to overcome it. They need somebody, they need leadership right now. That's what Tom's talking about, the demeanor on the side, and what leader, what senior is gonna step up for this team on the offensive side and get it done? Field a throw, and a short pass, caught by Sabian Holmes, and he's driven to the ground after a gain of one. I haven't seen a lot of shots downfield by yeah. And, and, and you know what? I think it's it's give credit to to Mississippi State. Everybody coming in said Mississippi State gave up three post routes for 70 plus touchdowns against UAB. They've come in here. They haven't given up any big routes down the field. Hill rolling out and open in the middle of the field is Holmes for a first down inside the 40 and cut down around the 36. 
by Christian Holmes. That was a great throw from Kenny Hill on the move. They're moving the pocket because they're a little bit concerned about the pressure that Mississippi State has begun to exert as one of Mississippi State's defenders down on the ground. But that was an excellent throw, confident throw from Kenny Hill. And a 26-yard pass play, the 39th attempt by Kenny Hill here today. 225 yards, a touchdown, but two interceptions. There you go. You see they're going to move the pocket here. Under duress there. He's not going to lose confidence. That's the one thing that we know about Kenny Hill. He's going to continue to take those shots, and they're going to need him to if they're going to get back in a 24-point game. It's got to be interesting, too, for the players, right? They're used to Manziel for a couple years and yeah. how he is, and then you got a guy who's totally the opposite in his demeanor on the sideline. And as a teammate, you got to get used to that. Now, again, it's worked. They're 5-0, and oh, and, well, a lot of time left here. It was Zach Jackson who was shaking up backup linebacker with Mississippi State. I think State. the leadership needs to come from the offensive line. That's where their seniors are. That's where their best players are, most experienced players. Problem is, those guys aren't touching the ball. From the 35-yard line of Mississippi State. They're going to run it here, and there's nothing. Trey Williams pushed back. Gain of one. Remember, he talked about Arkansas. No, that was last week. Mississippi State had a bye week. There's two schools of thought. Hey, you want to get back on the field after beating LSU. And then there's also, you know, we've got a tough schedule coming up. It's nice to get some rest and have an extra week to prepare as there's another injured Bulldog defender. I think that's Alonzo Williams, who has been outstanding for Mississippi State on the defensive line. But you're right. I think this this Texas A&M team comes in a little bit banged up. That Arkansas game was physical. Not only was it an overtime game, but it was an emotional game. It was a physical game. You now some great games tonight. SEC Pac-12 and ESPN and on ABC. Michigan State and Nebraska. If you haven't watched Amir Abdullah play, he's fun to watch for the Huskers. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. P.J. Jones was shaken up for Mississippi State. He'll go to the sideline here. Second down and nine for Texas A&M. But there was a big stop by Mississippi State at the end of the first half, holding AM to a field goal. Aggies need six. Hill throwing deep, and it's dropped again at the 15-yard line. That's the third drop by Sabian Holmes. And at some point, you guys still helping your quarterback out. I know he hasn't had the day that we're used to seeing this year, but you got to make this catch. That's a great throw. You know, over the linebacker. Good position there. You got to make those plays. There's been too many drop balls. There were drop balls last week against Arkansas. Josh Reynolds had two big ones. They continue to miss Malcolm Kennedy. And so deflating not only for the quarterback, but for the entire team. Now you're third down and nine instead of having the ball inside the 15 yard line. Open in the middle of the field is Niederhofer. Oh boy, he got smoked, but somehow hung onto the ball despite the big hit that time by Market. It's a first down, though. And that's where Malcolm Kennedy usually makes his hay. And Niederhofer there took a big hit because he ran through the zone. Here Seals Jones out on the flat. And he gets tag teamed to the ground there on the far sideline. No gain on the play. Haven't been able to get much with that play out of the flat to big number nine. That's eight catches, but only 53 yards for Seals Jones. Yeah, the corners for Mississippi State have done an outstanding job tackling on the perimeter. That's why... You want to stop that bubble screen and tackle from the corner spot. Second and ten. Hill. And that ball is pulled in. Oh, a touchdown. Speedy Noyle somehow caught it and stuck out the left hand and got the ball across. What an athletic play from Speedy Noyle. Perfectly thrown ball. You get a sense for the athletic ability. He extends that ball over the pylon. Feet definitely inbounds. What a play by Speedy Noyle. True freshman out of New Orleans. Finally, a receiver making a play. And we'll see how that impacts that AM sideline. It's a 17 point game. 331 on the clock in the third quarter. Second touchdown for Noyle this year. 
Well, we talked about it. Kenny Hill is going to continue to take his shots downfield, despite the fact that they have dropped some balls. Take a look at this throw. He's going to throw it right at the pylon. That's what he tells the receiver. That ball is going to come to the pylon. Speedy Noyle at the last minute gets his head around, and the official has a perfect angle there to see the ball cross the goal line. That's on Tolando Cleveland. The corner just kind of fell asleep there. Since they haven't thrown the ball down the field a whole lot, it looked like Cleveland wasn't expecting it. And you got to be careful if you're Mississippi State because this AM team, we know they can score fast. And with players like Speedy Noyle, Ricky Seals Jones, and Josh Reynolds, at some point they're going to start to make these kind of plays consistently. But can they stop Mississippi State's offense? That's the other question. Kenny Hill now has two touchdown passes today and 19 on the year. He came in number two in the country in that category. He also had two interceptions in the second quarter on consecutive possessions. That's a good-looking receiver there, number two. Yeah. <laughs> they got a lot of guys like that. <laughs> well, I'll take the guy that's, that's sure-handed any day over the guy that looks great and drops the ball. I mean, that's what Malcolm Kennedy is. He's not the tallest, the biggest, or the fastest, but he's the most dependable. And if Speedy Noyle can make plays like that consistently, he'll get a lot of more balls coming his way. And Kennedy out with a shoulder injury was a game-time decision. Hill, four of five, 61 passing yards. On that drive, they also ran the ball pretty well, about six yards of carry uh, for Kenny Hill today. And again, can a and get a stop? Time on the clock, but they have not been able to show much in the way of getting enough pressure on Prescott to make a difference, and they have not stopped the run. They've given up 220 yards on the ground. And a lot of that is because Mississippi State's just good. Yep. They're good up front and have good backs and obviously the threat of the quarterback run game. Prescott's got two touchdowns on the ground, 54 rushing yards. Holloway and Johnson are deep here for Mississippi State and Bertolet kicking it away. And it will come out to the 25. We told you about the game on ABC tonight. Let's let you know what's happening on ESPN tonight. Auburn and LSU at 7 Eastern College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Then UCLA and Utah to follow. Do you see a rebound by LSU or did we see uh, some warts uncovered uh, against Mississippi State? <laughs> well, I mean, we're finding out Mississippi State uh, again today, pretty good football team, but they made LSU look pretty silly on defense. They road graded them. Kind of a similar situation. It's 34-17 in this game. Mississippi State had LSU 34-10 at the end of three quarters. I think it's going to be hard for them to stop Nick Marshall in that running game. Here's Robinson able to cut it back and gets about six yards. That's been part of Bain and Prob on first down. They're, they're giving up five, six yards on the ground. They had a chance to get Robinson down. And part of that's on them, and part of that is just it's hard to tackle Robinson. 5'9", 215, hard to find him, and hard to get into the ground with that lower body strength. Let's give some credit to that offensive line up front, playing without their starting center and their leader, Dylan Day. They have Beckwith in there, but they have come off the ball and been consistent. Prescott, able to get the first down. He's not even contacted until he's got the first down marker. Miles Garrett finally got him to the ground at the 36-yard line. You got guys up front, Blaine Clausell, the left left tackle. They had to move Malone in. They had to move some guys around because of the shuffle with Day. Justin Senior, the right tackle, 58, I think is going to be an outstanding football player. Some Prescott will keep here, spins away from a defender, and then takes on another one and wins that battle with Sean Washington. Ramadi Watts there eventually, but it's another first down. Texas A&M doesn't have a linebacker as big as Dak Prescott. You can't wrap that guy up. The safeties come in. You can't get him on the ground. I mean, this is just too big and too good to stop. First down at the 48-yard line. Prescott will throw. Pass was low, but it was caught, and they lost yardage. No, nope, incomplete, they say now. Incomplete. Second down and 10. Well, one official said incomplete on the near side. And now it is confirmed that it is an incompletion. Jamoro Graham, the intended receiver. The only adjustment I would make if I were Dan Mullen, I wouldn't adjust my play calling at all. I just wouldn't be in a super high tempo offense right now. You want to burn a little bit of clock. You're up big in the game, burn a little bit of clock, but still be aggressive in your play call. Let's see if AM is aggressive here. Looks like it might bring some pressure on second down and 10. 
Five man rush. Prescott throws and it's pulled in. Breaking a tackle is Fred Brown to the house. Touchdown, Mississippi State. A 52 yard strike as Jack. Jack Prescott continues to elevate his status. He's thrown for two touchdowns. He's run for two, and it's 40 to 17. Well, that was big after AM gets the score to come right back. And through the air, Prescott finds Fred Brown for his first touchdown of the year. And people better start getting used to the fact that Mississippi State is not just a defensive team. This offense is explosive, and they are uncovering new weapons today. Without their star, Jamie and Lewis, this is Fred Brown on the outside. Again, a back shoulder throw. Look at him take advantage here of Devontae Harris and man-to-man -man coverage. That ball get a little push. You can get away with a little bit. The ball has been perfectly thrown from Dak Prescott on these back shoulder fades to Wilson, and now Brown has confidence as a quarterback. And if they can do that, because they're going to have that look consistently on the outside of man-to-man -man coverage because of the ability of Prescott to run, if they can continue to do that, it'll be difficult to stop this team. Well, you, you've been talking about Prescott all season, in particular this last week when you had a chance to watch film. Now that you've seen him live and in person, has he even exceeded your expectations? He throws the ball. He throws the ball better than I that I even thought. I mean, he's. We knew that he could run the football. And now I'm figuring out this kid can throw the football and he's got confidence. He's worked a lot with his feet in the offseason, but more than anything, it's been the confidence that he has and the leadership that he has. This team feeds off of number 15. And, you know, Tom, I, I, you've probably seen the same thing. Having some issues there with, uh, with Tom's mic. That's outside two minutes to go in the third. It's 41 17. And here's Noel on the return. There's a flag down. The Noel brought down to the 25. And again, there's a penalty marker thrown at the 15. Likely on the Aggies, which will back him up. Yep. During the return, blocking the back, receiving team number 33. Still the attack business for goals. Dave on the SEC Network, Florida and Tennessee, the Gators switched quarterbacks. They benched Jeff Driscoll. Treon Harris came in after a turnover, completed a pass to Matt Jones, and handed it to him. Under 10 minutes to go, Gators still in it. It's 9-7. A little bit different story here. A lot of people thought this would be a one possession game until the end, but it's a 24 point lead for Mississippi State after AM led 7 0. We get good yardage here, though, on first down with Trey Carson out to the 15 yard line for about eight yards as we close in on the end of the third quarter here in Starkville. As Mississippi State was unranked two weeks ago, but beat LSU. Jumped into the polls and moved up a couple spots after a bye week. They'll move even higher. They're going to win this one. With Auburn coming here next week. Carson gets the first down of the 18. And we talked in the first half a little bit about the schedule for Mississippi State. From the east, they played Vanderbilt in Kentucky. They still have to go to Alabama. They have to go to Ole Miss. And we'll see how Ole Miss fares against the Tide today. Hill throws, and another drop. Niederhofer might have been deflected, but he was Brown on the coverage, second down. You know, I've been impressed, Mississippi State defensively, Beniquez Brown and Bernardrick McKinney, both guys are big, big linebackers as far as the SEC goes, have been able to cover these wide receivers and done a great job against the pass. Hill in trouble, gets out of there, and looks to run. And dives to the 24-yard line. Inside a minute remaining in the third quarter. And it's a third down for Texas AM, and third and four. They're two of ten on third down, and they converted on third down in the last possession and got a touchdown. And 
Jones wide open and seals Jones up past the 35. Good tackle by Redmond to avoid a bigger gain. Still a 13-yard pickup. And that's just a great play design there, getting the matchup of Seals Jones on Bernardrick McKinney, the Mike linebacker. That's a mismatch that a and going to win. Run play here in the final seconds, and a huge hit as Trey Williams is dumped by McKinney. McKinney said, you might give me a pass coverage, but you run that ball, and I know how to play that play. How about the closing speed, too? He got there fast. I mean, 250 pounds at the Mike linebacker position, and he can run a 4-4-5. Four, four, That's just not fair. Well, Mississippi State in the conversation, perhaps for an SEC title. One of the reasons why, their defense. A journey to the next great championship in sports. ESPN, home of the new college football playoff. New Year's will never be the same. Start of the fourth quarter in Starkville. 41-17 Mississippi State on top as we continue with the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. And Dak and Robinson have been fantastic, combining for six touchdowns. Four on the ground, two by each. Prescott also with two touchdown passes. And then down 24 as the quarter begins. Hill stepping up, firing deep, single coverage, overthrown. First time in a while we've seen a deep shot. Edward Polk. About four inches on Will Redman, but he doesn't have a foot and a half. Well, and Will Redman, to his credit, he got beat deep a couple times in the UAB game for touchdowns, and they coached him up in the bye week. You got to stay on top of the post. He played that perfectly, and despite the fact he gives away six or seven inches to Ed Pope. So it's third down and nine. Only three third down conversions the entire game. Hill going to throw deep again for Noyle, and this one is caught. What a beautiful grab by Noyle inside the 25-yard line. I think this kid can play a little bit. <laughs> Such a good athlete. You know, you, every now and then you'll get a receiver that can go up and be acrobatic and make plays and doesn't care if he gets hit or not, and Speedy Noyle looks to be one of those young stars in the making at AM. 41-yard catch. Fans reacting here to the jumbo jumbotron. They thought... It was incomplete, and now play stops. You're Texas a and why aren't you up there snapping the football? I mean, they go fast anyway. Why, why not get up there and snap it? Why do you give them so much time to look at it? Going up the field with a completed pass. The previous play is on further review. Got to possess it all the way to the ground. And... Looks oh, like yeah. it came out there and hit the ground. Looks like he didn't maintain possession all the way. Should be a good angle here. That watch the nose of the football. And he bounces up. There it is. Yeah, yeah great look. It's incomplete. I don't understand though why AM was up there. Wasn't up there snapping the football right away. Even looked like Kenny Hill was signaling to snap the ball, but. Did not get it from the center, Mike Matthews. Regardless of what happens here in the fourth quarter, even if AM were to come back, I, I think what we've learned today is that Mississippi State's for real. I mean, they, they yep. backed up what they did against LSU today against uh, a previous undefeated team. Question is, can they compete with Auburn and Alabama, who will go one at a time? One at a time. <laughs> After further ado, the pass was incomplete. Therefore, it will be fourth and nine on the 37-and-a-half goal line. And I have to punt. Well, that was big right there. And so, a and has to kick it. I think the answer to your question is yes, they can compete with anybody, anybody in the country. What we've seen in the last two games from Mississippi State is they will control tempo. They are tough and physical. They will take nothing from nobody. And Dan Mullen has an offense now that finally he can win with and win consistently with. You know, so much uh, discussion about, okay, two for 21 against ranked teams or whatever, but 
now that they have better players, you're, you're going to see that record improve as they're on the verge of beating top 10 teams consecutive weeks for the first time ever. Mississippi State dominating number six Texas A&M behind Josh Robinson on the ground with 94 yards and two touchdowns. Dak Prescott 71 rushing yards in two scores. He's also thrown for 247 yards in two scores. Mississippi State looking to go five and zero oh for the second time in three years, but I think. The results in 2014 are going to be a little different than they were in 2012 when they started 7-0, finished 8-5. Kenny Hill has thrown two picks, but he's also had eight drop passes. They have not been able to convert on third down. Meanwhile, told you about Prescott and Robinson teaming up. And again, Jamie and Lewis, arguably their best receiver, is out today because of an injury, but it has not mattered. Keep it on the ground here and... Take time off the clock. Robinson gets about three to the 14-yard line. And I also think it's worth noting that they're out without their leader on the offensive line, their center, Dylan Day, but they have overcome that. Ben Beckwith has played well up front. When you have starters out, so much more of the pressure falls on your quarterback, and Dak Prescott has shown that he's got broad shoulders, can handle most anything. Prescott, a junior. Drops to throw, fires it deep. Wide open is Ross, and he dropped the ball. That would have been an 86-yard touchdown pass. Instead, it's just an incompletion. This was perfectly executed. Wide open on a double move. They beat Armani Watts, the safety 23. I think that's the now watch only watch, mistake on offense. Watch that reaction there. Do you see that reaction? It's level-headed. It's not, you know, anger. It's not exasperation. He knows Fred Ross is a young player. It's not like he's going to you know, go over and get in his ear. That's what leadership is about right there. They're going to run it on third down. Robinson stretching forward, and they finally get him down short of the first down, forcing a punt. But, man, it is hard to get that guy to the ground. I mean, you talk about two tough tackles. Prescott and Robinson for any defense. Well, and this, you know, this the Mississippi State offensively reminds me a lot of Auburn 2010, right? You had Cam Newton, who was a was a downhill power quarterback that was tough to get on the ground. Michael Dyer, right? Short, sawed off, kind of like Josh Robinson. When they wanted to throw the ball on the outside with Cam Newton, they could do it, and Dak Prescott shown the same. Short punt. And a and will have the ball around the 35 in a situation where they absolutely have to get a touchdown and they may not even have enough possessions, though. Down 41-17. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by the Lexus GX. Dare to be spontaneous. ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com as Mississippi State closes in on beating top 10 teams back-to-back -back games for the first time ever. You see Dan Mullen talking with Fred Ross and dropped the touchdown last possession. Pumping him up a little bit. Keep your head up, chin up. Young players, it's a sophomore. Kenny Hill, another drop. Pope had that one go through his hands, but nine drops now by Texas A&M receivers. They have Ole Miss next week at home. They still have to go to Bama and to Auburn. One loss in conference certainly doesn't eliminate them. There's something, hey, they two losses might still win the SEC West as good as this division is. Hill flushed out of the pocket in trouble, and down he goes, sacked at the 26 by A.J. Jefferson. The line of scrimmage has been won by Mississippi State on both sides today. Offensive line has been very good on their D-line against an excellent A&M offensive line. Well, here we are in the fourth quarter, and everybody had questions. Can these big 300-pounders still get after it? with this pace and space and 
They're still going strong. Six tackles for a loss for Mississippi State. The screen to Carson. He's got room. Tackled short of the first down. And he's got to go for it, though. Fourth down. Fourth down at about six. Raymond has gone by in the fourth. Fourth and six on the Texas A&M 39. Trying to keep a sliver of hope of a comeback alive by getting a fourth down conversion. Hill steps up and throws a pick. Richie Brown having the game of his life. Third interception for Richie Brown today. Kenny Hill has thrown more picks today than he had in the first five games combined. There's Richie Brown right here in the middle of the screen and I think the look is going to be great pressure. Richie Brown should take the defensive line out for a steak dinner because he's had three interceptions <laughs> thrown right to him and they're all been because they've gotten pressure on Kenny Hill. They had three interceptions against Mississippi or against AM last year. And three today. The first down on the 25 yard line. And here comes a reverse. Miles inside the 20, inside the 10, and pushed out of bounds. Dan Mullen doesn't care. 24 point lead, took a shot in the last possession with the deep ball. Now a trick play. Complete opposite from a week ago when he took the starters out, huh? <laughs> he is keeping the foot on the gas pedal, and I don't blame him. He told us yesterday he, he really second-guessed himself the entire bye week after doing that, pulling the starters. Felt like he left LSU back in the game, and it was his fault. First down and goal on the five. Prescott hit and finally sacked by Obioha. Deshaun Hall was there first. That's the first time I've seen Dak Prescott miss a miss a read there. It was a pretty blatant blitz look, and to think that you can play action and then try to throw the ball from the pocket against a look like that is just not going to happen. Mark Schneider dialed up the pressure. An empty set here for second down and goal. Prescott with two touchdowns running and passing. Here comes number three on the ground. As Prescott walks right into the Heisman discussion. His fifth touchdown of the day. Well, if you didn't know who Dak Prescott was coming into this afternoon, you certainly now know he's one of the best players in college football. 48-17 Mississippi State. We thought we had two Heisman candidates coming into this game. We found out a lot about both of them. Kenny Hill struggled. Turned the ball over three times to Richie Brown. More impressive than, th than that, we have found out that Dak Prescott is a heck of a football player and deserves to be in that conversation. You know, Dave, I was studying some film on uh, Dak Prescott this week, and I went back and took a look. Remember this play, Johnny Manziel against Alabama? We all remember this play, right? Hits his right guard, fumbles the ball up in the air. Gets out of the pocket and then throws a touch. This was a Heisman moment. Remember that? I do. Take a look at this. Tell me if this looks kind of similar. This is two weeks ago against LSU. Dak Prescott hits his right guard. I'm not going to go there. Let me try to get out on the side here. No fumble. No fumble. That's okay. There he is, Jamion Lewis. How similar does that play look? That may be, at the end of this year, we go back and look at that might be one of Probably not the only one of the reasons why Dak Prescott may just be in New York at the end of the year. Well, he's got 20 total touchdowns, including a receiving touchdown, and he's now beaten 
two top ten teams. Noel elects to run it out and shouldn't have. Second to the Reese. All right, Dave, time for our Goodyear Superior Performance, and Shane Carden of East Carolina turns in yet another one. I know it's SMU, but the numbers are still gaudy. He's hit 30 out of 40 for 402 yards and four touchdowns. Mustangs have finally found a little bit of offense. Only have one TD on offense coming into the game. 45-24, Pirates are going to get the victory. And superior performance here by... Another quarterback, Dak Prescott. Kenny Hill, meanwhile, three interceptions thrown. He does have two touchdown passes and a lot of drops by receivers. This one is caught by Taboyo and got about eight yards. Well, guys, down here on the Mississippi State sideline, you can just feel the enthusiasm oozing. And this is a team that feels like they've arrived. You look at the offensive line, and they're facing the crowd, and all they see is their offensive line coach and a crowd that looks at them a lot differently than they have in the past. Hill in trouble brought down to the 20-yard line. It'll be third down. And we were down on the field before the game. And you can tell they've got some dudes. But you, you can't tell who they are because when they warm up before a game, they have their helmets on and they have T-shirts. There's no jerseys, no shoulder pads, different from what we, we see normally on a college football Saturday. Yeah, and you know what? You don't see a whole lot of individuals on this team either, which is a good thing. They get the first down here with Williams. He's loose across the 40-yard line into Mississippi State territory and finally run out of bounds inside the 35. Isn't that the point of going to just take T-shirts and everybody looks the same or one team? Well, I think originally it was because they didn't want to get wet. They first game of the yeah, year, right? <laughs> but but I see where you're going yeah. with that. <laughs> I like my story much better. <laughs> Maybe they'll use yours going forward. They should. Put it in the game notes. <laughs> first down of the 32. Hill, look out. Sacked at the 45. And we talk so much about the offense for Mississippi State, but Mississippi State defense balling today. Well, it's a Mississippi State team that knows how to get to the passer. You know, you think about this defense, they return just about everybody on both sides of the ball. And so these defensive linemen, Jefferson, all these guys up front, Ryan Brown, P.J. Jones, Chris Jones, they can get after the quarterback. Hill on second down and 20. Incomplete. Third down. No, this football team right now on the defensive front has absolutely annihilated the entire game, Texas A&M's offensive front. And A&M up front's not used to having their nose bloodied. And as a result, what we're seeing, watch Kenny Hill's eyes. He's no longer surveying the field. He's no longer working through progressions. He's under duress. So the moment his eyes come down, he's in trouble because he can't get them back up. This offense is out of sync, and it's all because of the front. And he's down 31 points, too. That's tough. Third down and 20. Going to throw deep here over shot. It'll be fourth down. And we will go for him. Sure, down in the 31 points. Or maybe Kevin, someone's going to say, you know what, at this point, just punt it. Yeah. Let's not make it worse. And that, that's what he's going to do. And, and to think about how good Mississippi State has played defensively, this is an AM offense that came in averaging 51 points a game, which is second in college football and over 400 yards passing and today it's been literally shut down only 17 points so we've learned that you know mississippi state beating top 10 teams in consecutive games for real then we learned something about a&m too a&m with a overtime victory last week but getting blown out today The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup heads to the contender round 12. Nations battle eight advanced. There have been three different winners in the last three races, but the points reset in the contender round. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Kansas presented by Dodge. Sunday at 1 on ESPN. Mississippi State 48, Texas A&M 17. The 48 isn't really a surprise, but the 17 for the Aggies certainly is. Great punt, and Mississippi State backed up inside its 10. Let's go to Reese. 
All right, Dave, I want to show you what just happened on the SEC Network. Florida, after a 49-yard field goal, hanging on to a one-point lead against Tennessee, Keanu Neal comes up with the interception. Gators trying to run out the clock right now, but they're looking at a third and 21. See if the Vols get one more chance. And here it's 48-17 race, and Mississippi State back on the field, just looking to run the clock out. They'd love a six-and-a-half, seven-minute drive down the field, 94 yards right here. And Robinson on first down. It's about two. And we talked a lot about Dak Prescott, the player, as there's a little pushing and shoving going on. How about Dak Prescott, the, uh, the individual? We, we had a chance to talk with him yesterday was very impressive you know we kind of said after we're all talking like you know, that's the type of kid you really want to follow the way he spoke and <laughs> you see him there yeah. he's got his arm around uh, one of his teammates saying relax relax we got this you we know, don't need to get into shoving that and i think they they want to follow him for for two reasons one is his work ethic is incredible he he's willing to make the sacrifice of his time energy for the team and, and that's that's first and they will follow him for that reason and the second reason is his I think it's his perspective as you see he completes a pass there it, it, the perspective that he has on life and how important this team is to him and I think a lot of that goes back to him, quite honestly uh, to his upbringing his mother was a huge influence in his life as a single parent and then she she passes away Peggy is his mother passed away and, and he has two brothers uh, that were raised with him with his mom and, and that's a, I mean, the most the most difficult thing that a child or a young adult has to go through and losing a parent and it's really impacted his life in a, in a positive way and I think he he continues to play the game in honor of his mom and that's a very powerful thing as you see his his oldest brother there Tad yeah you mentioned his mom passing away that was last November was right in the middle of the season and uh, he grew up as you said uh, in a small home he actually shared a room with his mom so they're very close yeah. growing up and I was obviously devastated by that been able to put it in perspective though and, and, and persevere uh, as a leader to his team as LeBron makes the catch short though third down and one and I think you know with all the things that we see going on in, in professional football college football it's great to see kids like Dak Prescott that are doing it the right way taking the right approach uh, that are not in it for themselves but are in it for their team and are, are honoring uh, the people that have left us I think it's it's really cool and, and it's very easy to root for a guy like Dak Prescott Going to be interesting to watch him and this team. Uh, the final seven games of the regular season. Schedule obviously is difficult in the SEC West. Prescott on third down and one. Second effort. Still can't get the first down, so it's fourth down. And Auburn's got LSU tonight. But if Auburn wins that game, uh, they're coming here next week. I mean, we thought it was loud today. Yeah. Imagine next week. Well, and I think what's really in, in the favor, you mentioned kind of the, the teams they play out of the East, but also I think their buys, they have two buys, are perfectly positioned for Mississippi State to have the buy before this big game, after a big win against LSU, and then they play Auburn, and then they have another, another buy. So perfect uh, for Dan Mullen and this team. And... He's still fired up on the sideline. And they have Tennessee Martin before their game with Alabama. You could say that's a third bye. No disrespect to Tennessee Martin, <laughs> just kind of how it is. Here's Speedy Noyle. And kept his balance. He didn't go down. And finally, blow the whistle at the 43 yard line. Look, everybody's schedule in the West is tough, but. Look at who they have out of the East. Yep. Vanderbilt and at Kentucky. And those are the, the two buys there, you know, so they get two really big games at home, right? And right, it's sandwiched in between those two buys. And as you look at it, you know, Kentucky, Arkansas, this team, that game at Alabama, in my opinion, as we stand here right now, that game, Mississippi State, Alabama, is going to decide the SEC West. So you're saying that Alabama's going to beat Ole Miss today? Correct. Yes. And what about Auburn? Does that mean Auburn's going to lose once or twice between well, now still, and their meeting with Alabama? Well, whoever wins that game next week, I mean, right as I look at it right now, it'd be hard for me to say at home with the way that Mississippi State's playing and they get Jamie and Lewis back and Dylan Day back. I think Auburn has a hard time coming in here and beating this team. 
Well, we've seen Auburn a couple times this year. Seals Jones on the catch. And right at the first down marker, they struggled at Kansas State. And they did. And the biggest reason I say that, Dave, is because their offensive line has, has struggled at times. And, and the, with the way that this defensive line of Mississippi State's playing, I don't think they can block them. And the thing about AM, I mean, they, might, they, they got one of the better, maybe the best offensive line in the SEC, and they're having trouble today. You got a first rounder with left tackle, and maybe one a high draft pick at center as Trey Carson gets loose and gets a first down to the 31. If I'm Kevin Sumlin right now, I'm thinking about getting Kyle Allen some, some reps. You know, backup quarterback. Take these opportunities to get your younger players, players that haven't had a whole lot of meaningful snaps, some opportunities. Carson inside the 20-yard line. They're running hard, dropped inside the 15. And you just wonder if this was just too much for Texas A&M. You know, with all the hype, the, the win last week, coming from behind, all the emotion, playing the Cowboys Stadium uh, against an old rival in Arkansas, to be able to come back with your opponent having a bye week and have to win on the road. To the end zone, overthrown. At some point, you knew Kenny Hill was going to throw a couple of picks. There was going to be, he wasn't going to continue to have a, a nine to one touchdown interception ratio. Still learning. He's still learning. I think you know everybody now can take a take a step back and say, look, this is a kid that's got a lot of talent, but that needs to continue to grow, needs to continue to learn and get experience. And 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 his receivers need to help him out a lot more than they did today. There were too many drop balls today for you to come on the road and win against a good defense. And you got to wonder about their defense. And um, giving up 559 total yards. Josh Reynolds fighting. And again, AM on the first drive went right down the field and scored. And they've only had one touchdown since, and that was you know, late in the third quarter. But Kevin Summons, an excellent coach, they got a lot of players on this team. And this is just life in the SEC West. Yep. A lot of people had this team in their final four, though, you know? It's early. <laughs> I don't know why we're picking final fours as that pass is incomplete. We're picking final fours in September and I tell you what, October. you might see some Mississippi State in that oh, well, They win this game. To go there, yet, they though. win this game. They're ranked 12 currently. you got to anticipate they're going to get up to seven or eight, maybe, in, in the rankings, and then they play Auburn next week. So... A&M's going to be right there, or sorry, Mississippi State's going to be right there if they, uh, if they win again next week. They had Oregon in the Final Four also last week. Fourth and two, and they bring pressure, but a great pass by Hill, and Speedy Noyle hangs on for the touchdown. Boy, Speedy Noyle, a lot, very highly recruited, a lot of talk about him coming out of high school. And in first half of this season, he has showed up as advertised. And you know what? If I'm Kevin Sumlin, I'm going to pay really close attention to the film when I watch it tomorrow of this fourth quarter because I want to see who is going to play ball with 110% effort on every snap despite the fact that we're, that we're losing this game so badly. And Speedy Noah is going to show up. Yep, great point. 48-24 the score with 2.29 remaining. And Dak Prescott has been the story for Mississippi State. 265 passing yards, two touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns. Kenny Hill has thrown three picks. Richie Brown intercepted all three, tying a school record. But uh, Dak Prescott, the headliner today for Mississippi State. 20 total touchdowns now for him on the year, including a receiving touchdown. He did catch a pass today inside the 30-yard line. Here. Right, here it is. And I think, quite honestly, I think Dan Mullen's going to continue to find ways to integrate Dak Prescott's skills creatively in this offense. But if he's running the football, 
And if Josh Robinson is running the ball and they're throwing the ball the way that he threw it on the outside to Deronia Wilson, it's going to be very hard to stop this Mississippi State offense. Let's get Tom Luganville in here. You know, guys, as I just standing down here and watching it, looking at some of the throws and the ball placement that Dak Prescott, Prescott made, but I've been saying this all week long. I said it in studio this week. We can say all we want about Mississippi State on defense, and, and they've always been a strong team, but they've got to beat the big three in the West. But finally, finally the Bulldogs have a quarterback you can win because of and not in spite of. And at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, you're going to have to have a premier player under center if you really want to compete for a championship. And that's the difference between this team and the teams that Dan Mullen has had to this point in Starkville. They don't lose. I remember asking Greece a question earlier in the year, who is the best quarterback in the SEC? And you said the best two quarterbacks in the SEC are at Auburn. Yeah. I yeah. wonder if your opinion's changed here. Yeah, my opinion has changed. It has. And uh, because, of, you know, when we looked at Dak Prescott a year ago, he was a great runner. He wasn't a great thrower. And, and he give him credit. He worked on it, and he has gotten better. The throws that he made confidently in this game were impressive. Onside kick, and Wilson... Lost the ball, it's loose, and I think AM got it. Yep, Texas AM ball. And Dan Mullen has got to be saying, Didn't we just go through this two weeks ago? He's hot, he's hot <laughs> on the sideline. <laughs> that was not that was not well played by Deronya Wilson. You got you don't catch that with your hands. Never want to catch that with your hands. You'll catch it with your body and go down. Speedy Noyle recovered at shocker. Guy's been all over the place for AM. Tonight on ABC, Amir Abdullah. And Nebraska taking on Michigan State. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Abdullah certainly a player to watch. And you know, Michigan State still a great football team. It'll be a good one. Kenny Hill on first down. And ah, the ball came out there. No, nope, incomplete. Yep. Reynolds had it and went to the ground, lost the ball. That's 10 drops now for AM. and Although one official stepped in and said, you know, he caught it. And he was just putting the ball on the ground, but I, I don't think so. I don't think he actually had it. Do you? Let's see. Got it there. No, didn't control it to the ground. Carson on the run, brought down short for the first down marker. Inside two minutes to go, Mississippi State. Will improve to 5-0 and 2-0 and in the SEC. AM will fall to 5-1 and 2-1 and and in conference play. They will miss and at Alabama on the 18th of October. Niederhofer takes it inside the 25-yard line. And it's Malcolm Kennedy's shoulder injury. How serious is it? Will he return next week? You know, they could be playing another unbeaten team next week in Ole Miss, pending the outcome, obviously, against Bama. Up high to make the catch is Reynolds for a touchdown. Now, Kenny Hill dealing now. Four touchdown passes for the fourth time already in 2014. Well, and quite honestly, this is what we expected Kenny Hill and these big wide receivers to do at the start of the game. And, and really, they didn't take these shots down the field to these big wide receivers, but on back-to-back -back drives, they've done it. Yeah, the extra point is good. Still a 17-point lead for Mississippi State. Now, there, there's a lot that we could uh, break down with Mississippi State today on both sides of the football. If you had to pick one thing that stood out to you most about what you've seen today well, we the just talked, Yeah, we just talked a lot about Dak Prescott, but this defense is legitimate. And, and in the SEC, we know, especially in the West, that you're going to have to have good defense to win consistently. And you look at Alabama's always been the marker of, of how good defenses are in this division. And I think you now have to start thinking about Mississippi State, at least in the front seven. I think on the back end, at the safety position with Cox and some of the newer players in Jay Hughes, that they have got to find consistency there. But that front seven is going to have pressure and make it a a lot easier on the back end. I'm really interested to watch Ole Miss's defense today against yep. Alabama. How good is that Mississippi defense? You know, we had week uh, week one, we had Alabama. We saw some issues with that defense. Yep. It seems like this league now is more about offense than it is defense, but Mississippi State 
uh, showing that defensively it's right up there with the top teams in this league. Well, I think the biggest difference in Alabama from week one to, to today is, is their quarterback. <laughs> Uh, he is he is not just a manager. He's a playmaker and Ole Miss gonna have their hands full with Alabama on the offensive side And what a story that's been everybody thought Jacob Coker would win a job out of camp Even when Blake Sims started week one you yep. thought Coker eventually would be the guy but Sims Who's been a little banged up been outstanding here comes another onside kick and <laughs> Loose again, but I think yep Mississippi State got that one Elijah Staley with the recovery for Mississippi State. You think Dan Mullen might be working the hands team drill in practice a little bit this week? <laughs> Check that Zach Jackson, uh, Jackson, who was shaken up earlier in the game, got the uh, recovery. Only six incompletions for Prescott all day. And that's the thing. I mean, the efficiency with which they throw the football, because they have premium looks to throw the ball into because of the success of their running game, it's not about quantity for Mississippi State and Dak Prescott in the passing game. It's about quality. And when they throw the ball, they're getting big chunks. 76% completion rate today. That is the second highest for a single game in school history. He was at 60% on the year coming in. I'm going to take a knee here. And in didn't call a timeout, so. The Bulldogs can start to celebrate one of their biggest wins. Back-to-back -back victories over top 10 teams for the first time ever. And the defending SEC champs, Auburn, up next a week from today here in Starkville. These fans are going crazy. They know how long they've waited for an opportunity in a team like this with a player like they have at the quarterback position. They understand the moment. It may be appropriate to call it Start Vegas tonight. <laughs> The party is on here, and Mississippi State winning 48-31. Here's Tom. You hear Coach Bowen as you're taking a look here. Talking with Miles Garrett at Texas A&M. What a fabulous win for your program. How proud are you of these kids? <laughs> I mean, I couldn't be happier. Again, at the end, we got to finish. We got to play the entire game. We got a little bit lackadaisical there at the end. But I'm proud of our kids, proud of our fans. This is what we wanted to build. They all showed up. They deserve this. Look at this environment. And you know what? Your fans, they're not storming the field. The culture has changed here. They expected this, didn't they? They did. I think our, everybody in this building expected us to win. We know it's going to be that's a great football team, Texas A&M. We knew it was going to be a four-quarter battle. That's two of the best teams in the country going at each other. And, uh, you know, our fans knew they'd have to come and play hard for four quarters. Our team did. Our fans did. Everybody did. What did Dak Prescott show the country today as a passer? He was phenomenal on the back shoulder throws. What do you have to say about him through the air? I think he did a great job on his hands. They've got great talent at corners. We thought we had a little size advantage on, uh, on offense. And he took advantage of that size and uh, put the ball where they were. Go enjoy this win, Coach. Have a great night. Thank you so much. We will. Thank you. But as Dan Mullen told us yesterday, hey, we got to do it again next week. <laughs> Auburn comes to town a week from today, but they'll enjoy this victory tonight. 48-31 as Texas A&M loses for the first time. Mississippi State improves to 5-0. Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville, our entire outstanding crew. I'm Dave Pass. So long from Starkville and NASCAR Nationwide Series at Kansas right now.